Good evening, everybody, and let's -a go, because my name is Cameron, and we're making cocktails tonight. In case you can't read, allow me to narrate for you that the sign on the board says Super Mario and Cocktails. If we turn that around, it's Tails Cock Mario Super, and what that translates to roughly in English, because I'm sure they speak a different language over the Mushroom Kingdom, is that Mario and Friends most definitely get through the day by having a sort of spirit. There must be some sort of equivalent to alcohol over in the Mushroom Kingdom. And as with all things, life imitates art, art imitates life, perhaps the opposite way around. And I would think that over in the Mushroom Kingdom, they are most definitely serving cocktails that are reminiscent of the prominent notor no notor whoa, words, popular and notorious people in the world, not uh, included but not limited to uh, the plumber himself, the plumber's brother himself, um, the weird mushroom creatures that talk, the princess of the land, all their cohorts, and a big talking like turtle dude out there somewhere. It's a little bit of context of why I have something game related also on the stream today for cocktails is I have become not necessarily upset, I have been a little obsessed the past like week or two listening to a bunch of Super Mario 64 music, like the music that is playing right now. It was a, it was, I, I want to say it was a large part of my childhood, not necessarily any larger than other video games of my childhood, but it gives me that really, really good nostalgia feeling. And I know compared to a lot of other people out there, my childhood really wasn't that long ago. I am only the young age of in my mid-twenties, and other people are like, you know, twice that age, or even three times that age. And you may think like, my goodness, you thought that was your childhood? Man, that was like my, like, I guess, infanthood, I suppose, and you're right, and we should celebrate that. But I've been listening to a lot of the music. Um, I recently kind of became a very, very a fan of watching Super Mario 64 speedruns and stuff, which it kind of, it started out as just an excuse to be able to have the music up in the background, but like, not necessarily on like a um, like a local Spotify playlist. I have a means to be able to download the music from the video games and stuff using a website called KH Insider, which I would highly recommend. Um, and but you can store them on your phone, you know. But like because I have the local files on my on my sp phone on my Spotify, I can't get them onto my television or into you know other sort of systems and stuff. So, but what I can do very easily is pull up Twitch on either my Amazon Fire TV or my computer or my phone, or my Surface, which I wanna say is a computer, but it's too dumb to be a computer, so I'm gonna just call it the Surface for what it really is. Stupid, thanks Microsoft. Also, the, the screen is bending. It's like, it's like bezeled out this way, but uh, it's serving me well, I suppose. Anyway, but I digress. So, as the themes of Super Mario 64 and various other Mario games, including Super Mario Sunshine, Paper Mario, and the Thousand Year Door specifically, um, and there's another one on my, oh, and um, Super Mario RPG, Legend of the Seven Stars. That music has been playing like nonstop in my head. Um, and in my headphones and ear earbuds for like the past week or so. And when I saw the speedrunner stuff, I noticed that there was a speedrunning like competition that was happening over in Maryland like over the weekend. And I saw like seven big Super Mario 64 speedrunners all playing a game all at once. And I was like, man, this was the closest I think that I am ever going to get to having an appreciation of sports because in my opinion, speedrunning, all that hand-eye coordination that you need to play the game fast is definitely equivalent to a sport. It's an e-sport, so to speak. And I'm sure that there are organizations out there that actually will say this is definitely a sport. I am not a centralized source of truth on that, so I cannot say that with absolute confidence, but it feels very sporty to me. And I did try playing that on Monday um, on my emulated computer, and um, well, it shows its age. It really does. There's a lot of like input lag and whatnot, uh, but it's it's fun. I was I think when I first booted up the game, I was like, man, the controls of this are really really weird, and the camera's really weird. I wonder if I uh, I don't have my settings uh, hooked up properly, um, but I did because that's just how the original game played. But I don't have my original N64 here to be able to play around with it. That's back in my parents' house. Um, but it's but it's fun. It's been fun. And so yeah, over the weekend, I think there was about three day span where this speed run like competition thing was happening, and I was on it like as much as I possibly could because I wanted to hear the music and there were commentators talking about the different tricks and what that you can do and I was like, wow, I am so, so into this. And I was inspired, so to speak. And I was like, you know what? We're gonna play the game because why not? And we're gonna stream cocktails related to it because it's fun and I have a Super Mario hat and it gives me an excuse to wear these little white suspenders of mine to attempt to be as reminiscent to Fire Mario as possible. I don't have, oh, like, 
fancy overalls and stuff, but this is the closest that we're gonna get. Although, I will say, I did, I was Googling around to see if I can get, like, a maroon pair of, like, actual, like, jean overalls. Uh, they're expensive, so I didn't plan on buying those. In any case, welcome everyone to the bar, the bar with an X. There is no, the X is silent. It's, we're gonna get right into it with some Mario-themed cocktails. So, sit back, relax, put on a cap, perhaps a nightcap, grab a power-up or whatever, whichever one you want really we're going to start things off with a cocktail that i found on the drunken a lot of the cocktails that i found as i searched the internet for like themed mario cocktails came from this website called the drunken moogle which apparently does a bunch of video game themed cocktails and stuff it looks like it's kind of one of those tumblr pages so i don't know whether it's like actively maintained or anything like that i couldn't really find any up-to-date socials but it looks like it's a group of a bunch of different mixologists who can all just contribute to this community page and kind of you know have their credits put back into the right place although literally every single credit credit that I checked for all of the cocktails on this Drunken Moogle website, Tumblr page, went to dead links, so I couldn't find, like, anybody out there, unfortunately, um, but that's just how things are. If you want to put in your personal website on there, you stop paying for your personal website, and all of a sudden, it's gone, so that's just how it is. In any case, this one from the Drunken Moogle by, I, I don't know exactly who, uh, but it's, it's a Moogle who's drunk, and that's a, um, it's a Final Fantasy reference. I didn't play a lot of Final Fantasy, but I think the Moogles are like the... Oh no, they're definitely a Final Fantasy reference because I remember seeing Moogles in Kingdom Hearts, and Kingdom Hearts and, and Final Fantasy have a bit of overlap. It's called the Warp Pipe, and the Warp Pipe is something that combines... It's a green drink, naturally, because Warp Pipes are usually green, and sometimes other colors, depending on what game that you're going for. It, it You have to combine a blue curacao, Mike's Hard Lemonade, and some sort of melon liqueur in there. Um, they say bowls, but I don't have the I don't have the cheap stuff. I have I have Midori. I got, the, I got the good stuff. I got the real Japanese stuff. Look at the Japanese melon. I think Midori is actually Japanese for the color green, and I think they call them the Midori melons because they're the green melons so that kind of makes sense and according to the directions here there's actually a little bit of like it's kind of nice when i see these cocktail re websites that are posting like their own recipes and descriptions and stuff like that there's always like a sort of tone of whoever the mixologist is or whatever the cocktail artist is uh, like when they kind of insert themselves into it i haven't found a page that is really really like objective and saying like this is a recipe book cocktail ingredient one ingredient two ingredient three ingredient four method that's it. I usually don't find pages like that. It's really nice to find, like, mixologists kind of inserting their own personality into these things, as as I try to do often. We are all people, and I like to, I like to think, I like to remember that in whatever way possible. In any case, I've been talking a lot, so let's move right into it. In order to create the warp pipe, uh, we need to actually start off with muddling some lines, it seems. So we put it into a tall, they call it a highball glass. The picture that I have for reference here is definitely not a highball glass, but... Um, I'm going to use something, I'm going to use a glass that is the most reminiscent of a warp pipe, which happens to be this guy right here, a tall kind of, um, tall kind of, there's probably a proper name for a glass like this, but it looks like a warp pipe. I say very haphazardly swinging this thing around. I'm confident. I'm very confident. Anna has handed me a knife. I don't know where you Oh, well now I have two knives. Yeah. Would you like your knife back? Here you go. You can take your knife back. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Why do I have a cheese grater? That's, I don't know. You keep the cheese grater up here. I don't keep the cheese grater up here. This is news to me, but I will happily take the cheese grater. That's where I got it last time. I thought. Really? I'm very well, forgetful. I, I suppose so. Yeah, because Anna don't do the cheese. She does not do the cheese. Anyway, we're going to take this glass, and we are going to put it right there. I was going to say put it off to the side, but we actually need to do stuff with it. So the first thing that we're going to do to create your warp pipe is you're going to grab yourself a lime, whichever lime that you want. It says to use half a lime cut into wedges. Um, suppose you could use half a lime. I have a very small glass here, so I'm inclined that I'm only actually going to use just half a lime. And we need to cut it into wedges. And to be honest, I don't... I guess you can, you can cut half a lime into wedges, I suppose. I mean, if you do just a cut down the middle, right? Okay, so now one half of your line goes to the side, and you need to cut this into wedges, so I guess you can kind of go like, boop, and boop, and you get some wedges out of that. That makes sense. I, for some reason, like, in my head, I was imagining that cutting wedges from half a line was going to be a lot more difficult than it actually was, and wow, that was so, that was so easy, my gosh. Put your lime wedges into your glass. Take your cutting board, put it away. It's dirty, just like your knife. This lime will probably come back later, so as I know what I do is I take a little part of a paper towel, kind of put it on the end of it, just kind of wrap it around. And I'll usually put it in the fridge, but I have a strange feeling that we're going to get to this again rather soon. Um, 
So I'm just gonna put it to the side and hopefully I don't forget about it. I actually, last week we were making tiki cocktails and I had completely forgotten that there, I had completely forgotten that an orange roll to come underneath the counter and luckily I wrote it on my board so I would be, so I would be reminded. Vio has just popped in and says, hey, with three Y's. Um, the first Y stands for yes, the second Y stands for yeah, and the third Y is, is, is the last Y that goes in the word hey. So, hey, how you doing? So now that you have your lime wedges in your glass, you're gonna take a muddler, or according to Target, your garlic smasher, and just kind of muddle whatever you have in there. The idea is to not only express the lime juices, but also the lime oils. And there's not really, there's not a lot of space in this glass, so I'm gonna try my best without breaking it. Uh, we're gonna try our best here. Vio just wants me to know that their boyfriend works at a tiki bar and he loves the tiki cocktails. That is so exciting. Did he, uh, now I gotta ask, uh, if he works at a tiki bar, I imagine perhaps he's the bartender at the tiki bar. And if that is the case, does he have any recommendations and did he have a favorite from last week? I know my personal favorite was the fog cutter. That seems to be, I think, the most popular of the tiki cocktails from last week. Um, and I will also say that um, if, it's, if it is of interest, I will pull the tiki book out because I would highly recommend it. It's the only tiki book that I have in my collection um but really as of right now i think it's the only tiki book that i need uh because apparently it was a good one i need my bar spoon here to kind of um convince these limes to not smush up against each other they're getting a little too comfortable and to my knowledge warp pipes don't experience love so this is a little weird <laughs> it's getting a little wonky it's like when people like there's various different types of rule 34 out there and when you take inanimate objects and somehow assign sexual preferences and whatnot to them it's weird there's a game that i saw a youtuber play called chair fucking simulator it's exactly what it sounds like and i was like hey, hey, hey. anyway it was a game it was a game and still is a game vio says yes he's a bartender he loved the vod one and would love to see more tiki cocktails he's been wanting to try some new drinks out oh my goodness well i'm glad to know your feedback is very very welcome and I was really hoping that there would be some. So the reason I, the vibe when I put up, the, it's the first time I put like smack like a number on one of those thumbnails. It's tiki ball. It's tiki cocktails one or tiki drinks one. And like there will definitely be more because I feel like you can't just you can't just do that. You know, you can't just do tiki cocktails as a broad category and say nope, that's it. No more streams for tiki cocktails. They'll be back. I'm sure they will be. All right. So I have muddled lime wedges into the bottom of this warp pipe-esque glass here. Um, what do we do about that now? Well, I'm trying to think about how difficult this stuff is gonna get out. Um, uh, we're, we're just gonna go with it. It doesn't really matter. It's not necessarily about, I find that it's not necessarily a, uh, um, about pondering what the consequences are of your mixology and your drinking and your imbibing and whatnot. It's just about the process. It's really, really fun to get drunk. It's not fun to get undrunk. It's really, really fun to make the drinks. And I mean, it's usually pretty fun to drink the drinks as well. Um, but depending on what kind of person you are, you might feel differently than that. And that is okay. The next thing that we're gonna need to add to our glass, it says, it actually, squeeze the lime juice into a highball glass and then drop them into the bottom. Okay, I thought I was supposed to muddle that. Well, there's some lime juice in there. It works. Um, add some ice over top of the limes and then pour in some blue curacao. Add Mike's Hard Lemonade. I don't have any Mike's Hard Lemonade. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Mike's Hard Lemonade. Um, so I did go to the store and I bought some Mountain Dew, so hopefully, hopefully that'll work. I'm gonna use Mountain Dew instead. Uh, one of these cocktails too also calls for monster energy drink. I don't know if we'll necessarily get to that cocktail because I'm doing things a little bit differently tonight. There's like 20 different cocktails that I have prepared for this evening and I do not intend to do all 20 cocktails. Um, unless things get really, really rowdy in here and we're all having a great time, in which case, well, I work from home tomorrow, which is what happens on Thursdays. So I guess we'll go as long as we want to. Anyways, I need to grab some ice. So let me go into my fridge and grab some ice. Also, I realized too that I have very, I only, I've had the same music playing for a while now it just kind of it's on repeat and i say i think this is a good moment to change things up a little bit when i think of the warp pipe i think of specifically super mario sunshine so i am gonna go into that one and see if i can find a super mario sunshine one let's go with do 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 the hotel delfino is that the correct one let me let me listen to this I have absolutely no idea, but it feels good. Honestly, anytime I think of cocktails and Mario, I immediately think of Super Mario Sunshine, because I feel like, because even last week I was thinking, whoa, Super Mario Sunshine, because like you're on a beach, there's an island, Isle Delfino, it feels super duper tiki like. Um, that's what it feels like at least. I need ice, that's what I was going for. So I'm gonna go get some ice. 
Please skid for a moment. Um, now, I will say that I don't... Compared to the amount of drinks that are prepared, I don't have a lot of ice. So if I wind up running out of ice, we're just going to have warm cocktails. That's just how it's going to be. Um, I'm going to do... To conserve the amount of... <laughs> excuse me. Small ice cubes that I have. I'm going to put a couple in at the bottom. And I'm actually going to take one of my big ice cubes, and I'm going to try as best as I possibly can to actually crack the ice cube. I am really, really, really bad cracking ice cubes. I don't think that I've successfully cracked an ice cube without making an absolute mess of my bar and my psyche and myself and my bar again. Um, but we're going to try it because uh, if we if we don't keep trying things, um, then we will never improve. And it's all about improvement. As if I, I will be the, not the first one to say that I'm a very novice mixologist. I'm a very novice bartender as well. And we're all just trying to learn here. And so this is a very, this is a good space for that. I think at least. To crush a large ice cube, take all your fragiles out of the way and crush the ice cube, uh, preferably into the glass if we can, but I'll pick up the pieces if I make a big mess. I just, I get scared of this stuff. I don't know whether it's gonna work or not. Anyway, um, let's try it. Also, I need to make sure that my music is on. There we go. That is perfect. Okay, let me try it. Eh. Oh, that was cool. Wow. I guess it just takes confidence. Damn, that was pretty good. You got a big old chunk of ice off of that. That's great. And there's still like half of it left. I'm gonna do it again, because now I'm overconfident. Two. Okay, no, that's fine. How about another one? Okay, that's that's not bad. That is not bad at all. That's not that bad. Honestly, wouldn't be the first mess of ice I've made on this bar. Oh, goodness, that went over to my computer. I'm gonna hit it on the top now, because I'm scared. Ah, I'm really scared. I'm gonna use the muddler. Nope. All right, well, now it's on the floor. Excuse me, I'm gonna go get that ice cube. We're learning. We're done and we're learning. My floor is clean. I just I just cleaned it the other day. Plus, nobody else is drinking this cocktail. It's just me. So we're gonna try this again. I'm scared. <laughs> I don't want to hurt myself. Ah! Come on, dude. There we go. That's that's all that I plan on trying. I am I'm not going any more than that. My goodness. R.I.P. Ice Chunk 2022 to 2022. It was a good it was a good run. I think I made that ice cube last night. So. That one had the lifespan of a fly. An absolute fly indeed. How are you doing more than awesome? How are you this fine, wonderful evening? Things are, things are heating up, I say, as I'm cracking ice, which feels a little counterintuitive, but I assure you, I assure you, things are hot around here. Um, speaking of hot things um, and the ice, naturally, uh, we're gonna put something hot in our glass. That hotness is the blue curacao. It's three quarters, it says three quarters of a shot of blue curacao. Um, so I'm going to go get a blue shot glass and I'm gonna put blue curacao in it. All my shot glasses over here, but I'm gonna grab a couple because I feel like they'll be necessary. And I'll grab one of the blue ones. That's what I'll do. I like that idea. Here I come. Got a couple shot glasses now. Um, I only want the blue one this time. So that's what we're gonna go with. Three quarters of a shot. What a measure. Um, can't complain, says more than awesome. Drinking some bourbon, going to work from home tomorrow. Dude, me too. I love that. Actually, I um, I usually work from home two days out of the week, but the one day out of the week that I was supposed to be working from home, I was requested to go into work, and so I, I got there, and I wasn't really feeling that hot that day, but we got some really, really cool opportunities coming up, so I figured it was totally warranted, and my lovely, lovely boss was like, you know, because I made you come in today, um, you want to work from home on, on, this, on the other day of the week, the off day of the week, too? And I was like, uh... Uh, yeah, uh -huh. I'm not gonna pass up that offer. So I got to work from home today as well Three quarters of a shot of blue curacao into your glass there I would say I think I think a shot glass is usually about two ounces. So call that about like uh, What's three quarters of two-thirds just do the math Cameron um, one and a half one and a half ounces or about 44 milliliters Just do the math Cam. It's easy speaking of mathematics. I just learned that so addition is a thing it's easy. Multiplication is a thing. It's a level up from that. And exponentiation is a thing, but so is tetration and pentation. And if you think about multiplication as being repeated additions and exponentiation being repeated multiplications, tetration is repeated exponentiations and pentation is repeated tetrations, which are actually just repeated exponentiations, which are just repeated multiplications, which are just repeated additions math and it keeps going higher they're called hyper operations and i thought that was the coolest thing that i saw on the internet yesterday um today what was the coolest thing i saw on the internet today 
no, it was me. Duh. <laughs> I, I honestly don't know what else I had. Oh, my bucket. I need my bucket accessible. My, my trash bucket. Please excuse me. I was playing around with my lighting today. Um, as you can notice, there's some, there's, th th these things look really, really nice over here. I did some really, really nice work on the, on the blackboard, and I was like, I don't have any light to light these things up, otherwise they kind of look like crap, so, uh, they don't look like crap today. Uh, thanks, photons, we appreciate that. The next thing that we're gonna need inside of our warp pipe, it's looking a little blue, it's not supposed to be blue, we need to bring the color back to it, so what do we do? Is we add a different color, that color, according to, th this, this recipe calls for Mike's Hard Lemonade, I do not have Mike's Hard Lemonade, I went out and got other ingredients, we're trying to conserve the cost of things around here. So I did what any sensible Philly man would do, is I paid the sugar tax and went for Mountain Dew instead. Personally, I think it's, it's got a lemonade type quality to it, but it's also a lot more green, and I figure if we went through something a little more green, that we would take the safer bet to get something that looks like a warp pipe as opposed to getting like sprite or whatever which i don't think has color anymore so it really wouldn't look the same way but according to this recipe you take half a bottle of mike's hard lemonade i don't exactly know what the measures of that is but i'm gonna guess it can't be too dissimilar to a bottle of mountain dew which has 20 fluid ounces so 20 fluid ounces divided by two about 10 fluid ounces about one ounce is about 30 milliliters about times that by 10 about 300 milliliters or about 0.3 uh 0.3 liters in there so we'll see if i can measure that out and then you also put half a shot of melon liqueur in there as well which i guess do we do that next no we do that at the very top we do that at the very very top we top with the melon liqueur so let's see where we get with that i need to make sure that i still have enough space for all of that see how the dew changes color it's actually that's looking pretty green that's looking like wild green my goodness we'll also need space for like half a shot and i'll fill the rest up with um with mountain dew as well this is gonna this is gonna be great. I'm looking forward to this one. We also need melon liqueur. They say you can use bowls. There are tons of different types of liqueurs out there. You can pick whatever is most accessible to you. I think I find that bowls, I think, is more on the cheaper side of things. I have Midori, which is a personal favorite. It tastes like almost like cotton candy to me. It's a favorite of Anna's as well. So we tend to keep that stocked pretty uh, pretty consistently in this house. And my Midori is back behind the blue raspberry liqueur. It's a little getting a little tight down there. There's a lot of bottles of stuff. And we need about, it says half a shot of Bull's Melon. So luckily, I got another shot glass on the ready. So let's go for it. Half a shot of your melon cure. And like, I didn't do a much of a close up on this one. So I guess I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go close. Go close on this one. So we can see, we can see the color of this thing. And I'll put it up on a sacrificial yoga block in just a moment. Just so we have all the colors. Can you paint with all the colors of the Mushroom Kingdom? That looks, that is a delightful color of green. Get a little closer on that. Whoa! Get a little closer on that. Yahoo! Half a shot, or about an ounce, 30 milliliters-ish of your melon liqueur. Pop it up off the, at the top, and then I guess we'll just kind of, we'll fill up the rest of it with some, uh, with some more Mountain Dew. That makes sense. Nice, and I think I'm gonna, I need to put a straw on this thing, and I don't think I have a straw that's tall enough for this entire glass, but we're gonna give it a shot. This is our work pipe. In the warp pipe cocktail from the drunken moogle and it looks pretty tasty and it's gonna be pretty good i think it's got all the good stuff in it it's got a nice little blue gradient down at the bottom i don't think that's intentional so i'm gonna agitate it a little bit just so we can get a little, get a little more um uh, uh what's the term i'm looking for a uniform color happening there put the rest of that melon liqueur in there either that is good melon liqueur midori we cannot waste a drop of that do i have a tall enough straw I really don't. Um, is my bar spoon tall enough? <clears throat> it totally is. So I'm just gonna pop it into the bottom. Gonna agitate these colors a little bit. The limes are kind of floating. Oh yeah, that's a beautiful, beautiful change of color. I'm just gonna kind of swivel my way up at the top. It'd probably be useful if I had like a swivel stick here, but I do not, I do not have that. That is beautiful looking. Wow. That's a beautiful looking warp pipe. I jumped down that warp pipe. I totally would. And we're going to put a straw. I don't even know if it's smart for me to put a straw in there. If I do, I feel like I'm going to lose the straw. But we're going to try it. This is what we do. YOLO. All right. Well, it's in there now. There's a warp pipe. <laughs> I, I totally dig it. Um, the warp pipe. This is the cocktail that we made here. It's Mario related. Mario, Mario jumps into warp pipes. He does that often. Was created with three quarters of a shot of blue curacao, um, or about uh, yeah, like like one and a half milliliters, I think, just about. Um, we also added half a shot, or about a, a milliliter, or like thirty mill. Oh, sorry, an ounce. 
or about 30 milliliters of melon liqueur. And then you could use half a bottle of Mike's Hard Lemonade. I used Mountain Dew because it's the closest thing to lemonade that I have in the house right now. I probably could have just made lemonade now that I realize it now. I have sugar and I have lemons and there is water to spare up here. So probably could have done that. But uh, they say that hindsight is 2020, and if you're staring at the world backwards through a pair of warp pipes, I, I assume that your eyesight's okay. I mean, why? how are you holding those things? They're really, really heavy. Um, and that's how you make it. And you also take half of a lime, cut it into wedges, then juice it, then throw it into the glass. I think it's supposed to represent a piranha plant in there somewhere. I wouldn't doubt it. It sounds tasty. It is tasty. Um, I say that confidently. I haven't actually tried it yet. So this is the warp pipe. Let me take a quick pick because this is a really, really nice green color and I love the way it looks. My goodness. In my light, it actually looks a little more blue with my light in the background, but that could be, that could be edited just a little bit. I don't have anything, if I were to garnish this, I don't have any uh, recorded garnish that usually goes with this, but I think that would probably go well with a, uh, I guess, what, what pops out of a, what pops out of a warp pipe? got mushrooms that pop out of warp pipes you have people that pop out of warp, uh, warp pipes you know now that i think about it i think the perfect garnish for this would be a little baby mario and what i mean by that is you get one of those like i've definitely seen tiktoks of like these little tiny like like baby dolls they're not even dolls they're, they're like this big they're little baby miniatures um and i've seen many of them i've seen them in bowls of soup i have seen them in pots of boiling water i have seen them in the midst of the woods on my own travels um and if i had any of those i would definitely have a little dude with a little mario hat up on top hanging at the top of this warp pipe and it would represent mario in um tall i think it was tiny huge Tiny huge island in Super Mario 64, but he can get really, really small and he can get really, really big as well. Um, that would be the representation that I have here. Oh, what's up? Oh, what is this? Oh, and I found a miniature. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's not Mario. It's not Mario, but it's okay. Excellent idea. It's okay. He doesn't need to have both arms. Oh, this is excellent. 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 This is called improvisation. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Okay. He's been washed. Great. Here we go. Here we go. This is the inner child of Cameron coming out. It's Luigi. It's Luigi, and he's blue. So the perfect garnish to this cocktail is gonna be a little, a little dude, <laughs> hanging outside, uh, hanging up at the top of the warp pipe. Uh, and it's a very, very, th it's a very, very slim warp pipe. I don't know if he's gonna make it. I do not think that he's gonna make it. All it takes is a single push. From, a, from an unsuspecting individual to push our little dude in there. And that is so cute. I am, excuse me, all I have to take a picture of that. I'm gonna take a selfie with this thing. Hi, everybody. Look at my little dude. Look at my little dude. Oh my God, so cute. Anyway, we can all, we, just because you're old enough to drink does not mean that you can act like a child or channel your inner nostalgia. There is nothing wrong with that. Keep it going, keep the vibes going. I also can barely see when my screen is at the proper length, so if things look a little weird- Oh no, it looks- You can definitely see the sea in cocktails, so we're doing great. Um, so yeah, garnish your warp pipe with something that you'd find in a warp pipe, like a small little Luigi, who um, I'm gonna take out of the glass now and suck the toes up just for a bit. Just so like, let me, let me get like a paper towel. Let me get a paper towel for this guy. Of the small little sip that I just had, it tastes awesome. This is- not bad at all. This is so palatable. My goodness. So let's go for it. Um, the warp pipe. It's got Caracao in it. It's got uh, Midori in it, the melon. And it's also got Mountain Dew. And Anna just placed a tiny little Princess Peach, a little Amiibo. I am not putting that in a cocktail. That is too precious. There's a story behind that. Remind me to tell you about it. Oh, that is so interesting. Ooh. Wow. Okay. It tastes like somebody popped like a lime wedge into into uh, into Mountain Dew. Anna wants to try it. Anna's popping on. She really wants to try it. Well, it has Midori, right? Oh, it's it's got Midori in it. It's got Mountain Dew. It's got blue curacao. It's got that's a good one. It's really really good. Oh my god, she's gonna, totally gonna walk away with it. It's really good, isn't it? Yeah. It's really really good. Anna's taking one. She's taking the Anna text. That's so tasty. Oh my god. Oh, do you not actually want it? No, take it if if you like it, please. It's it's hard to come by a uh, a cocktail that Anna really really likes. Can so I have half of it? you can absolutely so have half fine. of it. Yeah, that's fine. Or you can just like drink as much as you want of it, and when you're done, you can just pop it back in the bar. We'll see how what kind of damage you do to it. Okay, I'll come back with it. Peace out, Disney Queen.
Love that woman, my goodness. Great ideas and um, a great taste, if I may so if I may say so it's myself. Sugary. It's sugary, it's so good. Um, breaking down the flavors of that as she walked away with it, I got one taste, but I'm that good at mixology to tell you exactly what it it's tastes taste like. No, 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 it's okay, please, go, 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 go. The show must go, the show must go on. Um, it tastes like you added lime to a Mountain Dew. There's something else going on there, and I wanna say it's almost the cotton candiness of the Midori that rounds it out so well. It's like an unexpected flavor that tastes so, so good. I did not know that lime juice and so and, um, Mountain Dew specifically go well together. I'm sure it would taste quite different if you used Mike's Hard Lemonade. It's a different kind of flavor to it. I think the lime from the lime and the lemon from the lemonade probably play out a lot differently, um, but it'll also have, I guess, uh, it'll be a little more alcoholic. Although actually, well, maybe it's about the same alcoholic. I think you can use blue curacao syrup if you opted for the syrup, which is the non-alcoholic version of the regular blue curacao, then you'd probably have something that is on par with the, uh, if you were to use the Mike's Hard Lemonade because you're using quite a bit more of it. I don't know what the ABV is of that, but my blue curacao is, I'm gonna guess like 12%, perhaps? 15%, I'm guessing? 15%, 15% alcohol. Hard, I so. think it's about 7%, 6% max. That makes sense, yeah. Or maybe even be a little, a little bit less. I don't know. I used the alcoholic stuff because that's what I had minus the Mountain Dew. So, very good. Tastes like sugar. It's almost coconutty. It I get like a coconut under thing flavor, to it. Like kind of like a sour. Yeah, it's because of the lime juice. There is there is something tropical about them. I love that. Domstar coming back for the six months. You've been subscribed for six months. No, oh, babe. I love this. I'm trying to move away from party hat stuff. So what I'm going to do in the interim though is I'm gonna write your name up on the board, you special, special star. Right, congratulations. Congratulations. Uh, thank you so much for subbing to my channel. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Domstar, he's awesome. What a guy. Domstar. Is that how you spell your name now? 99. Like Stomstar64? What a guy! What a guy, what a gent. I see his face almost every single morning and it brings joy to my day, especially on the days where there is just sometimes joy is hard to come by. And it's nice to have people who care and nice to have people that you care about. So thank you very much for being in my life so far. What are you doing? Ding. Ding. Thank you. Oh, Thank wait. you, Thumbstar. Oh, well, I changed your username. <laughs> uh, I just got a haircut, too, as well. Oh, my goodness, nice. I I don't go for haircuts very often. I really should, though. My hair's getting getting a little long, boys. You go every four to five, I go, six months. I go anywhere between, yeah, that's that's kind of the, I should really four go, six months. I should really go more often than that. But in any case, I think we're looking pretty good. Nobody can tell. My hair blends in with the... With the, with the blackboard here, it looks beautiful. My goodness, it's great. It's like every two months for Domstar. Yeah, I feel like I, when, I went to the, when I went to the barber last, um, the, the phrase, what they had said to me, what my uh, hairstylist told me was like most, most men wind up coming back like every month or so, most like two months or whatever. Uh, and every time they come back, they get their haircut and they're like, well, it takes about a week and a half for it to get to really what I like it to. And I guess it's kind of like a cosmetologist's job to you know cut the hair, care for the hair, tend to the hair, but also to like try to figure out like, like, at least for a particular patron, like what it is that their preferences are and try to get it as close as possible. Or maybe it's by design that you only get what you like about a week or so later and you have to come back for more. Maybe it's all a part of the plan. Um, I, for one, would love to go try to go to like a really expensive barber just to kind of see what it's like. I've always wanted to try it. Um, but like money, money is hard to come by though sometimes, even when you do have a full-time job. Crazy how you can work your ass off 40 hours plus a week and still have just enough to kind of live your life the way that you want to. Oh, crazy. That's why we drink. That's why the folks in the Mushroom Kingdom are sure drink too. You think that Mario's got it, keeps all the coins? No, he starts over with every single game and you have to start over from zero. So like he's donating to charity or something. It's certainly not going into any bank anywhere. That would be crazy. In any case, we have completed one cocktail so far. You don't see it here because Anna kidnapped it. Our warp pipe is in another castle, and that castle is downstairs in the dungeon, where King Koopa, is what I'm referring to Anna as right now, is, is um, slowly but surely sucking on that warp pipe. It's great. It's why I smoke. The haircut? The haircut thing is why you smoke? Oh, interesting, interesting, interesting. I think, I, re I recall, once upon a time, I used to smoke a bit of the dank, you know? Oh, never mind, never mind. I was making a comment of why we drink. It's why we smoke. That's the, the light bulb hit. I got that. I understand that now. All right, let me go back to my cocktail collections that we have here. I think it's time to change up the music a little bit. Let's, let me think. What, what do we got next? 
There's a couple, there's a bunch of different cocktails on here. There are some of them that I really, really want to get to, and there's others as well. I think we started off the night with a warp with a warp pipe. That's a tall beverage that is now in the hands of some other person. Um, I think I think we should do a shot. A shot or two. There's a bunch of different shots that I wind up finding, and I want to see. I want to see which one is the best. Well, actually, here's one. What um, if we're talking about why we drink, potentially why we smoke? We're trying to give a little oomph back or to, back to our life. I think what we can do is we can either go one way or we can go another. We can either go anti-life, dare I say death, or we go life-life, as in an extra life. Um, let me see. I'm trying to click my screen here. There we go. Um, we're gonna do a one-up shot. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a shot. It'll be great. Shout out Mario theme. Shout out Mario. Ooh, you know. Hmm. I was in the Shadow Mario theme, as in the music and stuff. I think I don't know if I had that one in this play in that playlist, but I do have the entire Super Mario Sunshine soundtrack. I think we're gonna go up. A, we have a one-up shot going next. So I'm gonna change it to. Let's see. What what feels what feels real good? What feels like shot stuff? I'm gonna go with. Something close. We're gonna go with the secret course. I'm gonna go from Super Mario Sunshine. Right? Did I did I switch that? No, I did not switch to that. Now I'm switching to it. There we go. We're going hunting for mushrooms, everybody. The next cocktail that we're gonna make, not really a cocktail, it's a shot. It's called the one-up shot. It also comes from the drunken Moogle, uh, and it's basically just one half a shot of Midori stacked on top of a shot of Malibu rum. It's very, very simple to make, and it has a nice little layering effect if your mixologist is skilled enough to be able to do it properly. So let's grab our two ingredients. One is going to be that Midori, which we saw earlier, and one is going to be that Malibu, which sits beneath my desk that y'all probably never seen before, but is always, always ever-present. Why would we do anything without Malibu? Then we're going to need a shot glass. I think there's going to be a lot more shots than I anticipate here, but that is okay. I am proud of that. So very simply, we're going to layer one shot, one ingredient on top of the other one to kind of make it look like a mushroom. You know, the um, the one of mushroom has like a, it's kind of got a, got a green on top, you know? Little bit of the little bit of the white stuff, you know, and then uh, you got that stuff on the bottom. Uh, where'd my white marker go? Where did Anna put my white marker? My goodness. Oh, well that's okay. We got extras. I got I got extra markers here. I, I always gotta have extra. The little guy there. Whoop, whoop. A little bit of white. A little, little bit of white. Ba -da 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 -da. Good stuff. I love that. And that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take my sacrificial yoga blocks out. I'm gonna put my shot glass on top of it so everybody can see what's going on, and we're gonna try to make this look pretty. It's it's very very simple, but uh, some of the really good some of the good stuff in life, simple, simple simple stuff. Let's see, did I get that? Did I get that perfectly centered? Maybe, maybe. Oh, it's kind of going towards the Malibu. Oh, are we gonna make it? Are we gonna make it? Yay! Oh, uh, needs to be taller. Needs to be taller. Can we put it on top of another glass? Let's put it on top of another glass. Here's another glass. Is that gonna work? No, that's not balanced at all. I can't stick around, but I wish you the best of luck. That's okay, sir. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your evening. Rest up well. I know there is a hard worker who lies behind that screen over there, so you deserve it. I need something else to prop up the shot glass. How about another shot glass? We just put one shot glass upside down. Hey, look at that. That totally works. That's looking pretty good. All right. So now we're just going to put... <laughs> We're gonna put Malibu on the bottom, and we're gonna put uh, Midori on top, just like just like what it look just like what it looks like in the picture that I drew. Hopefully, we don't make a mess. One half a shot of Midori. Oh, sorry, Malibu, Malibu rum, and then we put the Midori up on top. Quite simply, 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 that's just what we're doing. And I'm gonna take one of my bar. I'm very, very not confident in layering things, so I'm gonna take a bar spoon, and we're gonna do this uh, the way that. I don't know, God intended it? I don't know if God intended us to get drunk all the time. If there even is a God. Who knows? That's up for debate. Alright, let's layer it and hopefully not spill things. Oh, we're kind of spilling things. Well, that did not work out the way that I wanted it to. Oh, it's kind of, it's kind of separating. That's super interesting. Okay, well, the, um, the picture that I has has this <laughs> layering in the opposite direction. That is so interesting. That's wild. Yep. This one says that the Midori is going to float on top of the Malibu. However, if we do a little bit of math, this Midori is... Uh, what is your proof? Your proof is 
Meanwhile, the Malibu is 21%. So, but I don't know how much has more sugar, so. Oh well. That's what we did. It's a one up. <laughs> I thought it was gonna look cool, but it really did not. So that's okay. We uh we do what we can. We experiment with things because that's what makes all we just do. Or at least that's what I that's what I say that we do. Because as, as we all know, I am very much a central source of mixological knowledge. It's what mixologists do because <sighs> I'm a mixologist. I wouldn't necessarily call myself a bartender because there's not much at my bar to tend, aside from my own messes and stuff, which makes sense. This was a one-up shot. It's literally half a shot of Malibu rum and half a shot of Midori, the melon liqueur, or whatever melon liqueur that you have. I suppose you could probably use some other like coconut uh, Caribbean rum as well, aside from Malibu, but it's it's good, so I wouldn't, um, I would recommend it. Anyway, uh, salud to those, cheers to those other ones, and a wahoo to all the Super Mario fans out there. Here's to the uh, a one-up and an extra life to get you through the day. Mmm, that's very, very tasty. Malibu on its own, very, very good. It's like, Malibu was like the liquor that I would bring, the liqueur that I would bring to all the different events and whatnot if I knew there were people there who weren't necessarily like big spirit drinkers because it always hit well. Um, except for Anna, because Anna's not a big coconut fan. And I know a couple other people in my life are not that not that into the coconut either. So it doesn't hit with them. Uh, but that's why you bring the Midori as a backup, because it's not at all coconut. And it's also super duper sweet, almost cotton candy to me. Um, and it just goes well into things, and it turns things funny colors, and we love to see that. So that was the one-up. And I don't have a life counter here, um, but I definitely have one more life than I did before. So I'm going to draw one. How many lives do I have? I have, let's see. Put a little X there. I assure you I'm a much better drawer off camera. <laughs> this kind of stuff looks terrible. I have, instead of zero lives, I have one, I suppose. Let me grab one of my blue colors. Are you good? I love the color blue. I have one life now. I gain a life. And so are the rest of you. Y'all have gained a life. And that is a very, very good thing. We could all use a little more life, I think. It's a very, very good thing. I don't know how that looks. It's probably behind me, but it's okay. It's gonna be all right. In any case, I'm gonna take this shot glass and put it away. There, I feel like there are gonna be more shot glasses that are gonna become victim to the the evening this evening. The evening this evening. So we're just gonna proceed on with it. As with everything, make sure if you're doing this kind of stuff for funsies, you're doing this stuff because it's a living or whatever. Just keep your health, keep yourself hydrated. Make sure that your health is up where it needs to be. For every shot you take, I guess you should technically take a shot of water. There's like rules associated with it. Not necessarily rules, but like guidelines, I suppose. And I would think that one shot of alcohol to one shot of water will probably keep you more or less okay. I also had a large dinner before this, so that's just something that we keep in mind. In any case, so we made a one-up shot. That was pretty easy. It was super easy. It was only two parts. There are also other shots on the menu. Um, I'm wondering if this is something that we want to do now. Eh, not really. The other shot that I have here is the booze shot, as in like booze, the not booze like the alcohol, booze as in like the enemies in the Mario series, the dead ones, the ghost ones. But it's just it's just half a shot of Malibu and half a shot of milk. And I don't I don't have the milk up here, and I don't really think it's necessarily worth it. It's it's gonna be pretty much the exact shot that we just took, except instead of being a clearish green color, it's going to be milky white and it's going to taste mostly like coconut so i don't think it's necessarily worth it so i'm going to move on I'm move on to something different there was one cocktail on here that caught my eye and i want to say that i specifically planned for this one um i did because i brought ingredients for it so we're going to move on to that one next in keeping with the whole super mario sunshine theme of everything uh we are going to do a cocktail called the noki bay breeze which is very very similar to a bay breeze cocktail which usually uses if i'm correct in saying um i think the bay breeze uses pineapple juice orange juice and vodka i believe is the bay breeze or i might be getting that mixed up but it's definitely somewhere close i think the pineapple juice is key there and the orange juice i believe or no, no, no it's a uh, pineapple juice and cranberry juice? I'm not exactly sure. We can Google it. I don't have to be so uncertain about this stuff. Let me quickly change the music, though, to, I think, do I have Noki Bay on here? I do have Noki Bay. So we're going to do Noki Bay, because it's a Noki Bay breeze. Dun, 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 da, 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 da,
The Bay Breeze is created with, it's cranberry juice and pineapple juice. And this one uses orange juice and cranberry juice. So it's not technically a Bay Breeze, but whatever. Dead Girl says, hey, and there's like, oh my God, there's like six Y's there. It must mean you're having a great time. Or it means you're having a terrible time, in which case I have absolutely no proper reference on how much fun everybody is having. But that's okay, because I'm having fun. And I spent, and you know, and we're having a good time here. So, but that, but that little party horn thing, I feel that. We're going to make a Noki Bay Breeze, which is not a Noki Bay, it's not a Bay Breeze. It is a Noki Bay Breeze. A Bay Breeze usually calls for pineapple juice and cranberry juice, uh, but this recipe calls for rum, orange juice, and cranberry juice, and blue curacao, and it kind of mixes in such a way that it's going to look, well, it's, it's going to look differently. So we're going to go straight into that. I think, personally, if we want to make it Bay Breeze-esque, that we should add a little pineapple juice to it, and we'll see if we feel inclined to add some pineapple to it. Uh, we'll see if I remember it. If I do, that's exactly what we're going to do because we run by the rules of the people and I am one of the people who are at this performance show thing. It's kind of it's kind of how it works. Anyway, let's get, grab ourselves a glass, shall we? Um, I'm gonna go with something that looks a little tall, tall-ish, something that feels day breezy. I really want to use a tall glass, but we're going to use something like that. So let's use a glass that I don't really use uh, often. We're going to use this. It's kind of like a hurricane glass, and I think it's going to look cool when we stack everything on top of each other. I'm going to keep the camera more or less close in on this one because there's some really cool effects that happen with the, with the, with the way that you pour all the different ingredient colors onto it. And so we'll get to that, but first we need to prepare the ingredients. And so we'll move right into that. We are going to need two ounces of gold rum. The goldest rum that I have in my collection is this rum from Barbados called Mount Gay. It is just the most gold rum that I have. And this two ounces could be some of the last that I have of this rum. It's very, very good. I, when I was at the liquor store today, I saw it and I was like, I'm pretty low on this, but I don't think I want to, I don't want to, um, I don't want to get more of it now. I don't, I don't need to get more of it now. So I, I did that. So we move on, but we're going to need two ounces of that gold rum. We are also going to need four ounces of orange juice. And in order to get four ounces of orange juice, you're going to need to get an orange squeezer and a collection of different oranges. I still have all of my oranges from last week. Um, some of them are not looking that hot, it seems, which is interesting because they looked just fine yesterday, but you know, fruits are fruits are fickle creature. There's another orange, that's a good orange. And oh my God, Luigi's falling. And there's another orange. And let's take this really, really bad orange and throw it out because it's a bad orange. We don't, we don't keep those here. Ooh, oh, we got a little weird. I'm gonna clean that up one second. I'm gonna do a little bit of cleanup. We don't like the gunk to move around and put that in my, my junk bucket because it's nasty. And I'll put all my other fruits and stuff in there as well. I also have peaches back here. You probably can't tell, but there are peaches hiding behind everything. Let's see if our little Mario Bros can keep their composure. Lovely. Thank you, boys. Appreciate it. Oh, but you're blocking the princess. Come on now. Have a little respect. Have a little respect for royalty. I am hoping that we can get four ounces of orange juice from all these oranges. I don't plan on using the oranges for anything else, so we're going to go for it. Um, but we need this orange juice. We also need cranberry juice. I have that in my fridge. And we need blue curacao. So I'll take out the blue curacao. I think because we used the alcoholic one last time, and it's time to use the syrup this time. So that's just what we're going to go with. Allow me to go get cranberry juice. And, uh, and, and I believe there's still a piece of an orange in here as well. Um, so we're going to take that as well. Yep, there is. There is some orange left. And I see cranberry juice. Oh, 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 I'm so glad that didn't break. That was a gift from a friend of mine. Very good. We like not breaking things right here. And if we do break things, we want to make sure that it's on camera because then it's just hilarious. Cranberry juice. We have more orange. So let's get more orange. Get orange with it. Okay, so we're going to need orange juice. So we're just going to take a moment. We're going to just gonna consider ourselves. Just gonna think about for a moment. Think about what we're about to do. We are about to take the life of a fruit. Fruits do not feel. And so if you believe in giving thanks for the life that you are about to take or the life that never existed to begin with, take this moment. Think about it. Ponder and then go freaking live. And so I'm gonna go wild. Take this thing back here. I don't need that. I'm just gonna cut these guys up and then just go for it. RIP that orange, dude. <laughs> Going wild. This is one kill, down, easy. Two kill, down, easy, flip you over. Three kill, down, easy. And um, this one, this one is kind of already, it's cut the opposite direction. It's not gonna squeeze very well, but we're gonna try it anyway. I actually ate one of my oranges yesterday and I was like, wait, no, I need a bunch of orange juice for this cocktail stream. I don't know if I should eat all these. 
Um, so again, I hope this is this is enough. And if it is not enough, then I'm so sorry. I tried my best. Um, I just all all I can hope is that what we do here is enough for y'all. And if it's not enough, then please say something. Like I can't I can't tell. I can barely remember to do my own laundry when it's sitting right in front of me. I can barely remember to do the dishes when there's literally I can I count how many dishes are in the sink, and then for some reason I don't remember to do the dishes. I'm like um. Yeah, I don't need to do those yet. And then I just keep on walking. And I and I and Anna points it out to me later and she's like, Cameron, you didn't do the dishes. I was like, yeah, of course I didn't do the dishes. There weren't enough dishes. She's like, it's filled to the brim. And I look at it and I'm like, You're right. That's a mess. Who could possibly leave it like that? And she's like, Are you kidding me? So it's a very I would say it's a very funny, funny house, very funny life that we live. Um, but sometimes it's a little frustrating. But alas, no, nobody's here to talk about. Nobody's here for me to talk about my relationship problems. They're not problems. It's just, it's just living. It's just in general coexisting with another person has its ups. It's got a lot, a lot of ups. But it also has some downs as well. For example, being a person who misses exactly what's in front of their face and then being reminded of it. That's not a bad. Like that, that's probably a good thing from most people's perspective. But I assure you, when I look like the dumbass, it's a very bad thing from my perspective. Um, but ultimately we get, we get past that we become better people and uh, maybe one day I'll be a, 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 I'll be a good guy I'll be a nice guy. That's that's what it's all about. I don't, I don't want to be a nice guy Every guy that says they're a nice guy is not really a nice guy, but I'm a nice guy But I've got a deep and evil core so I can be honest about it because I know exactly what I'm advertising here There is malice that lives deep in my soul <laughs> And is it something that I'm a slightly ashamed of? Yeah, a little bit, but you know, everybody's got that. Everybody's got to feel a little bit of schadenfreude. There's just something about, very specifically, there is something about videos of um, people hitting things. Like for example, accidentally running into a tree or going face first into a stop sign um, to the beat of music. Specifically, it's a hard knock life from the critically acclaimed musical Annie, but just like, it hits me deep in my soul in the best of ways and i just go ballistic i hysterically start laughing when i see stuff like that and people are like oh my god cameron what are you watching and i'm like i'm watching people get hurt and they're like what the fuck is wrong with you and i'm like but it's so funny it's to the beat of the music and um depending on who i'm with it's either a okay dude or it's a <laughs> you're right that's that's sick dude um usually it's my co-workers and we just can't stop making um we can't stop making penis jokes all the time um because there's literally it's so funny right down the office way from our lunch area is a sperm bank so there are people coming and going no pun intended literally all the time and we're like i wonder if that guy donated i wonder if that dude donated i wonder if that girl took a withdrawal who knows? I wonder if this person is just going to check out, just going to inquire, like, hey, I heard there was a cryobank somewhere around here. I'm looking to make a little extra cash, and they're just like, come on in, no pun intended. And you're like, oh my god. It's very, very funny. I have personally, now, I, I talk I talk a big talk. I talk about the cryobank, and I, they really, if I'm going to make fun of the place, I should really go up to it, inquire, and inquire for myself. But I've already had that conversation, and my partner is not okay with the prospect of little bits of my DNA being stored in cryogenic storage for years to come and to be used by some other person out there. She's not cool with it, therefore, I'm not cool with it, because if, if you know that your partner is not cool with that kind of stuff, why would you do that? Why would you do that? I wouldn't, because I'm a nice guy. I said that earlier, and I have a deep, deep heart of malice deep in my core. Um, but we're also honest about that. It's all about honesty. When you're when you're squeezing oranges, um, it's all about letting out the truth. So tonight on Camera with the Next, as we squeeze a bunch of oranges and listen to Super Mario Sunshine music, truth or dare? I'll go first. I dare myself to squeeze some oranges. I'm already halfway there. Y'all turn. Your turn. Your turn, y'all. Truth or dare? I used to play so much Truth and Dare, Truth or Dare, back in. I think it was it was mostly middle school, but we did a little bit of it in high school too. When people started bringing like weird stuff to parties and stuff, and it was always a fun time. I would always love to play Truth or Dare because I was the person who, ah, being a being a uh, your your average everyday, um, I guess very stereotypical man person boy i was a boy at the time was trying not to do truth like at all because i didn't want to let my feelings out i didn't want to tell anybody about the feelings going on inside of me i've become a different person since then but i love to do dares and eventually i became too scared to do dares so we kind of we kind of flipped at some point probably um either late high school or um early college because people really i don't know for me people stopped playing truth and dare truth or dare in college it's kind of it's kind of a good thing but also kind of sad 
there's a there's two sides to that um but i love to do dares and there would be like there'd be some dares i just i think what happened was as i got older the dar the dares started getting more and more like extreme more and more intense and more and more dangerous too and i didn't necessarily feel comfortable in the social setting to say no i'm not gonna do that dare because that's stupid and i don't feel like setting off fireworks in a building um i didn't feel comfortable doing that so i would just not say dare i would just say truth and i started revealing a lot more info about myself which as i continued to do that felt really really good it's really good to talk about what's going on in the inside it's a good good feeling um it helps you get it out externalizing things it's good good psychology i was told specifically the other day by a random video on the internet that don't talk about psychology on the internet because you don't know what the hell you're talking about and you're right i don't know what i'm talking about however i do know what kind of makes me feel good and it makes me feel good to talk things out so i'm gonna go with it and I'm gonna keep going with it until it winds up, until I realize that it's hurting somebody. In which case, we've probably gone too far. Anyway, I've completely decimated all the oranges in my collection, and there's really nothing left for me to do uh, but end stream there. So thanks everybody so much for watching. Uh, we have orange juice now, and we've had a shot or two. So uh, that was wonderful, is what I would say if I was serious. But I'm not serious. I'm a nice guy with a cold, cold heart on the inside, and we've been over this already. It's great. 10 out of 10, OJ stream. OJ, ooh. Watch yourself there. Watch yourself there, more than awesome. I don't know if we have four ounces of orange juice, but we are gonna take what we have and we are just gonna we're just gonna roll with it. So now, now that we've prepared all of our ingredients, we're going to create the Noki Bay Breeze. And the Noki Bay Breeze is something that you build in the glass. You want it all to kind of stack on top of each other. I think this would probably be best done with a couple of cubes on the inside of it. So I'm gonna get some large cubes and I'll put them in the glass. We're gonna apply the um, the rum first, then the orange juice, then the cranberry juice, and then the blue carousel up on top. And we're gonna see what happens. Um, it should it should look pretty, pretty cool. And I say that because I watched a TikTok video on it and it looked cool in the TikTok video. And as we all know, if you see it online, it must be real. It must be real, unless somebody specifically has a video debunking it, in which case it might be a little not so real. Okay, we're gonna prove it. This is the this is the video that is going to prove whether it works or not. Uh, actually, I, I forgot to mention this this Noki Bay Breeze is by the Sin City bartender, um, who I discovered after using uh, realizing that there's actually some content that I enjoy on TikTok um, about a year or so ago. They make a lot of they they make a lot of. Um, video game inspired drinks and stuff and it's it's actually very very cool i've taken a lot of inspiration from their from their work very very cool i need to get this ice into there so i'm just gonna real quick do a little do a little shaving action there's a little bit of shaving of my ice because i need it i need it in the glass a little bit of shaving in the ice there we go I'll shave this other side too this is a very despite the fact that i have cubed ice cube containers like it's very oblong and um it acts a little weird sometimes oh perfect don't break, please. Please don't break. There we go. Thank you for not breaking. I'm gonna do one more ice chunk because um, I think it's I think it's warranted. I think it'll look good. Oi! I just need to shave this one as well. Do I? Eh, I need to shave it a little bit. Just a little off the top, please. I say before shaving your head. I said a little bit. You said off the top. I used. Cre I, I was being created. I was being creatively liberative. Creative liberties. Oh, my liberties are creative. Oh, that's because I live in America. Oh, come on now. Well, you'll eventually fall in. I, I believe in you. By the time it takes for me to put this thing away, I bet the ice cube will fall right in. I'm just gonna let it do its thing. Oh, that's the wrong container. I'm not stalling. I'm not stalling. I would never stall. All right, let's get zoom in on this thing just so we can see what goes on. I'll do my best job narrating what the cocktail is supposed to be doing, um, even though it may not be. Let's get a little nice little angle there. Take one of our sacrificial yellow blocks. Put it right up on top. Trying not to disturb the beautiful ice display that is about to grace us. Yeah, it looks pretty good. It looks pretty, pretty good. Um, so we're gonna need to start out with two ounces or about 60 milliliters of your gold rum. So I'm gonna grab that in the background while things are happening. Uh, we're actually using ounces this time uh, and or milliliters and not measures of shots as the, um, the one uh, drunken moogle tended to do. We need two ounces of that. And that's gonna be not quite the end of my gold rum, but we are, man, we are getting there. I need some more gold rum. This is a, this is a really, really good rum too. That ice cube still hasn't fallen yet, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna encourage it. Maybe if I warm it up a little bit, but like, 
I tried breathing on it, but there must be there must be a better way. Maybe if I just like I hold it like this, I apply a little bit of heat to the sides of the glass, and melt the ice cubes ever so carefully. And eventually, with the power of science, it's not going to work because the top of the glass is actually a lot it's a lot thicker. So by the by the time it makes its way in, it's still not going to work. Doing a little more shaving. Oh my goodness, you're so close. Yeah, dude. All right, two and a half, two ounces of your rum. Don't spill. You spill a little bit, but that's because you have a very hard surface there. It's, it's bound to happen. We also need four ounces of orange juice. So let's take the, the let's take the, um, I guess, take the bodily fluid of our fresh kill. Put it in there. This container is super stupid to pour from, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna unscrew it first. This thing is so dumb. It has a spout, but it does not pour from the spout. This is very stupid. I'm not the stupid one, I promise. Well, I can't make those guarantees. All right, let's get two ounces of orange juice spilling a shit ton of it, because I don't know what I'm doing. And about two more ounces, because we need four ounces total. And we got, we got about four ounces, that's great. Four ounces are about, um, like 120 milliliters, if I'm doing the math right. It's probably like more like 117, 116. I'm doing the correct, uh, the, um, the equation's right in my head. And we apparently need three ounces of cranberry juice. I feel like I need more space in this glass. Um, I might need a bigger glass. We'll see what happens. I might need a big, I, I think I might actually need that. Wow. Maybe I need one less ice cube. I go in there. Let's see if I can take this ice cube out. Cause I think it didn't need as much ice cube as I thought it would. Let me see if I can do that. Mm, there we go. If we want it again, We'll put it back inside, but I don't think we're gonna need that extra ice cube because we have plenty of plenty of uh, liquid to work with. We're also gonna need three ounces or about 90, or maybe like 80, 88 milliliters of cranberry juice. Bought mine, Nature's Promise. Got it from Giant just right before. No sponsorship or anything like that. Just really like Giant. A lot of there's a lot of deals at Giant. Need three three ounces or about 90 something milliliters of that. Let's go for it. There we go. Nice little red effect going on. Not very a little effect. But it's cool. The, the point here is we're not going to do much mixing on our own because we're going to let the cocktail kind of take on a form of its own. Um, it was a lot more orange in the video, and I thought perhaps by going over the ice that it would look a little bit better. But you know what? It's nice and it's red. It's cool looking. And then we're going to need one ounce of our curacao or our blue curacao syrup, which I have back here. That's about 30 milliliters. Let's go for it. About one ounce. There we go. Let's see how that looks with a little bit of light on it. How does that look? That's, um, that's... Hmm. Honestly, probably could have looked cooler. I thought there was going to be a lot more color stuff going on there, but it really didn't. But that's okay, that's why we tested out. I've never made this cocktail before, so I can't advertise that things are going to work perfectly because how the hell would I know? <laughs> I wouldn't know at all. Do, you, do we think we could use that extra ice cube in there? I feel like it's going to spill over if we do, so maybe... Maybe I want to take the chance. Mm, I don't know about that. There's a little more blue curacao left. I'm gonna put a towel beneath it because I really want to. I really want to try it. And if it makes a mess, then it's fine. We just clean it up. That's the beautiful thing about messes. We have been trained since since like middle school to clean them up, so we know how to. Um, although some people really really lack in that category, but that's okay. All right, we're gonna put another ice cube in there because we can. Cause, Cause why not? <laughs> if we fail, then it's okay. Do it very carefully. Very careful. Whoa! Ooh. That was absolutely perfect. I thought that that was gonna be dangerous, but it was not. Looks okay. Very good. Fan of that. All right. I don't think we need to look at this anymore. So let's let's get on. Get, get out of there. Get out of here. You don't need it anymore. That's the Noki Bay Breeze. Um, honestly, we're going to put a little bit of pineapple juice in that. Otherwise, because then it's actually at least part of Bay Breeze. Um, and we're also going to garnish it because I have some extra pineapple from last week because we killed a pineapple. My name is Tanya. I am English So please excuse me as I go get some pineapple juice and some pineapple chunks, which I have in my refrigerator. I didn't, I didn't know that we were going to need pineapple chunks, uh, but I got it. That's that's good. We like to prepare ourselves. Like any good cooking stream, we prepare things ahead of time, um, or at least we pretend to, and we, and we and we try. We certainly do try. So I got a little bit of pineapple juice. I'm gonna shake it up a little bit. Um, I'm just gonna fill it 
I'm gonna put a little bit there. Wow, that was not sealed at all. Alrighty then. Very, very sad. Very, very, very sad shot there. All right, that's fine. All right. Nogi Bay Breeze. Let's, put, let's actually make it a Bay Breeze. Let's put some pineapple juice up on top. Maybe maybe get a little more color to it. A little, little bit? But no, that's fine. It's whatever. We tried. I wouldn't say that it's a failure. Certainly not a failure. Just just not, not what I thought it would be. We're also going to put a pineapple wedge on it because we've gotten this far. We might as well. You don't, you don't go this far without going the whole, the whole mile, you know? Let's put a little, um, I got a pineapple wedge. I'm going to put a little, I'm going to put a little, um, slit in it. Put it on the side of the glass. I think it'll look pretty. Pretty pineapple. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's really, really filled up. Please excuse me while I get a straw. You know, I'm going to get a, I'm going to get a bendy straw for this one. I'm feeling it. You know, I've also got umbrellas over here. I'm feeling an umbrella today as well. Nucky Bay Breeze, that feels like a per a boom straw. Boom straw. And, uh, I don't know. Just do an orange umbrella. <laughs> Let's go for it. It's a nice contrast against the yellow on the pineapple. We do this because we can, not because we have to. It's because we do, we do this by choice. We're humans. We have free will. It's great. Free will gives us the ability to do shit like this. Oh, that's a... That's a... We don't, we don't like flaccid umbrellas. Like a nice erect umbrella. There we go. And a... <laughs> and a straw. A bendy straw. This is not mixed very well, so I don't think it's gonna... I don't know if it's gonna work that well. I'm gonna take a few sips of this um, so that I can put more pineapple wedges on it because I did, I just, it looks great. There's a little more blue curacao left in my measuring jigger, so put that on a pineapple. Ooh, it's blue now. It's actually not that bad looking. I'll zoom in on that actually. That, that's a nice presentation. I like that. And then I'm gonna take a big old sip of it and y'all can have a very odd close up of my mustache, which I don't have because I'm not actually the Super Mario. I'm just an impersonation. Come on. Oh my goodness, wow. That is a very, very pleasant drink. That's very, very good. That has a wonderful... What what got me was the cranberry juice. There, I, I continue to forget that, like, straight-up cranberry juice has a tartness to it that I'm not quite... I, I'm not big on tart and sour things, so... When it hits me, it hits me pretty hard. Um, but that's very, very pleasant. It certainly doesn't have like this this blue, orange, and gr like like this blue, orange, and red color scheme that um, the the video made it seem like it had. But there was probably more ice in the glass. I used two very large cubes, so there wasn't as much space for the liquid to kind of get to know each other and get stuck on. I bet if I used a lot more small cubes, there would have been more interstices where the liquids and different colors could kind of let their densities play. Uh, and kind of, kind of catch on things, kind of, you know, because like rocks and stuff, because ice just hard rocks, rock water, water rocks. I'm going to move this cocktail over here a little bit closer to me. Um, I don't want to spill the thing. I don't want to spill anything. I'm going to need to do some cleanup after this one. Excuse me, y'all. This is very, very dirty. Very, very dirty. My fingers are getting a little sticky from everything that we've been doing over here, so that is okay. I'm going to put my pineapple stuff there because I plan on using them again. The Noki Bay Breeze, yeah, the Noki Bay Breeze, which used mm, two ounces, about 60 milliliters of gold rum, four ounces, or about 120 milliliters of orange juice, freshly squeezed, three ounces, or three, three, three ounces, or about 90 milliliters of cranberry juice, just straight cranberry juice. I got mine from a bottle. I, I can't squeeze fresh cranberries here. I don't know how to. And then one ounce or about 30 milliliters of blue curacao. I opted for a syrup. It made things a lot sweeter. This is a very, very, very sweet drink. It's got a nice tartness to it because of the cranberry juice and whatnot. And the alcohol, at least for me, goes completely undetected. Although if you have people in your life who are very, very alcohol detective, like they're very like savanty alcohol detectives, then they will probably be able to taste the rum in here because rum has, rum has a quality to it, you know? Very, very good. I can actually hear my rum taster popping upstairs. Um, it looks like she got about halfway through her warp pipe. No more soda. No more soda. No more soda. No more Mountain Dew. Would you like to try a Noki Bay Breeze? What does it taste like? Tastes like tart fruit and stuff. It's got rum in it, though. Would you like to give it a try? Here you go. Here you go, my dear. Well, don't look so disappointed about it. You don't have to. Oh, the warp pipe has re returned to me. This is so good. What do you think? It tastes like bitter cranberry juice. I feel that. 
I'd I'll say more. I'd say more so on the tart. You don't taste the rum. Interesting. I don't taste the rum. What, is, what do you think is giving the bitterness there? Oh, we also added pineapple cranberry juice. juice. Cranberry. You said it tasted like bitter cranberry juice. Yes. Okay, so you just think it tastes like this bottle. It tastes like my bottle. It's incredible. I love it. I love it. Very, very good. Very, very good. Excellent, excellent observation. I don't think it's much like it's not really a me drink because it's a rather tart. Um, going back to the warp pipe though. Oh, absolutely. It tastes Freaking delicious. sweet and sugary. It's sweet and it's sugary. And Luigi put his feet in there. Honestly, what more should you ask for from a cocktail? It's got everything. It's got it's got sweet. It's got sugar. It's got celebrity feet. You can't get any better than that. It's just it's just perfect. I'm gonna put both of these drinks. I say off to the side. I'm gonna make some space over here. I have plenty of space that I could be giving to stuff, but um, I did not make the space for it. So let's take. My love picture. I'm gonna put it down here to make space for cocktails. Cause he needs love when you have alcohol. Kidding, kidding, kidding. Oh, it is sticky on that side of the bar. That is. I don't know where that came from. So I've made three cocktails so far. One was the warp pipe, inspired by your favorite Mario game. One was the one up shot, um, inspired by that little mushroom behind me. Um, I drank it. It's gone. Sorry. I didn't take a picture of it either because it really wasn't that cool looking. Uh, and then we made the Noki Bay Breeze, which Noki Bay, Super Mario Sunshine. And we made it a little more Bay Breezy because there really wasn't any pineapple juice in it. So it really wasn't much of a Bay Breeze. But we take creative, we respect the creative liberties of other mixologists. And so we respect, um, we respect ours as well. I'm going to put some coasters over here because things are sticky. I do not like sticky drinks. Sticky drinks indeed. Let me take a si another sip of this. And I feel like, actually, let me put some more pineapples on it too. Just so I have them to snack on. Because I, I love, I love pineapples. Good stuff. I'm gonna put a couple of them there. That's not too bad. I don't know if that's worth taking a picture of, but I'm gonna anyway. Feels good. I need to wash up just for a little bit. Um, because things are, things are getting a little sticky over here. And so, I have to kind of... I want to keep things going, so I had to do some little bit of cleanup. So let me put these cocktails off to the side, make sure that I get some water in me. Uh, this is everyone's reminder to drink your water. Def definitely go ahead and drink it. Oh, make sure that your cutting birds are not blocking your light. I'm going to need the water after that one because the cranberry juice and the orange juice got some acidity to it. It's getting me, getting me going. Got my, it's affecting me. It's affected me in all kinds of ways. And um, also, if you're into pineapples and you have some extra ones, carefully eat them. I've had these pineapples for, oh, well, since last week, but they've been refrigerated, so it's lovely. Absolutely. Tasty, tasty, tasty. Put them back in here um, for another day. Always nice to have pineapples for a rainy day. Pineapple later. Honestly, I usually don't go to the store and buy big fruits like that because I'm kind of I'm kind of scared, you know? Because I'm like, how in the world am I going to use that much of a single fruit before it goes bad? And honestly, with a little bit of determination and some planning as well and proper preparation, you can keep that stuff for quite a while. It's interesting to think too of most of the fruits that I had left over from uh, about a, a couple days so far. Um, they kind of they kept really really well except for one orange. One orange was not that good. But all the others were just fine. And so, have a little bit of faith in your, invest in good ingredients, have some faith in your ingredients, and they'll pay you back. Which sounds like a really, really good marketing line that I just came up with. So, you're welcome. Y'all can take that. You don't have to put any liberties back to me. It's okay. I don't make that much money on this. That's why I have a job. 95 job. I'm gonna wash my hands a little bit. Uh, I don't really have much else to clean out. Oh, I still have some extra orange juice over there. So that is very, very good. I'm gonna do a quick wash of my hands. Take one of my towels. Um, one that Luigi was hanging with. Here, Luigi, why don't you hang next to your work pipe? How about you hang between these two cocktails? Can you do that? You can. Nice job, Weech. Great job, dude. Proud of that. Proud of that indeed. All right. Uh, and in the meantime, too, I'm going to take a look and see what kind of cocktail we want to do next. Uh, check a couple of things so far. Uh, but to everybody here right now, hi there. My name is Cameron. If you didn't quite get that from the Twitch URL or anywhere else, I don't know where you are right now, but I hope you are comfortable. I hope you've got your own cap and whatever kind of power-up you need. Perhaps it's alcohol. Alcohol seems to be our power-up this evening, but it could be anything for you. Perhaps a nice energy drink. Perhaps some other advice in your life. Uh, we've had smokes mentioned here. I personally don't do much of it myself, but if that's your thing, you know, 
that is okay we all have our vices that we that called us to this world and that is okay okay indeed and uh that's good um hmm what do we want to do now let's take a look at the collection see what other things that we can make if anybody else out there ha why am i putting my hat backwards that's not cool i only think it's cool being that we're doing various different super mario themed cocktails this evening i will put it out there to the crowd as well if any of y'all have any sort of ideas you're like oh my god like i really want to see a cocktail inspired by this particular enemy or character i'm open for it sounds like it'd be a lot of fun i always like a nice challenge and so if that's something that's like kind of on the tip of your tongue you're like mm, i don't know whether i should I don't know if that's the kind of stuff that he does. It could be. All you have to do is ask. I'm totally open for it. We have a couple different cocktails here that we can make. I haven't done anything Princess Peach related. Not yet. Oh, actually, there's another. There's an enemy here that I want to try. Um, it's a Goomba. It's a Goomba-inspired one. I don't know if I want to do that next or whether I want to do the Princess Peach next. This one uses... Oh, that uses the peanut butter. I really did want to try that. What about this other one? What do you use? You look like you're a shot. You want to do a shot? Um, that uses... Oh, that could be good too. Oh, there's so many different good cocktails to do here. I cannot do them all. Mm. I'm gonna go with the... I'm gonna go with the princess. We're going to go with the princess next. That's what we're going to do. And then we're going to try to do a Goomba afterwards unless somebody stops me. So the next cocktail that we're going to do is going to be inspired by our, our dear princess, Princess Toadstool, which I happen to have an amiibo of. It reminds me that I should tell the story of how I actually got that amiibo. So Anna and I love to do cosplay. Uh, we also go by Cal Rossi Cosplay on the interwebs, and we love to dress up like various different characters and whatnot from our childhood, various different characters that we've seen in like animes and whatnot. And one time, I love Super Mario Brothers, so I wanted to dress up as Princess Peach, so we did for an anime convention and as we were walking around i believe it was anime next about three i think it was three to three to five years ago um we walked by this little plaza area and they were like oh my god you're dressed up as peach you totally deserve this and they handed me a little peach amiibo and i was like oh my god that is just the cutest freaking thing it's got like, some velcro on the bottom of it so you can like stick it anywhere it's so, it was so cool and i was like wow it's an honor they made a proper donation to the kingdom and i was like oh my god this is so so cute um, I love that. And so being that we're going to Princess Peach, I think it's only proper that we go, we take it back to 1964. That's why they call it Super Mario 64, don't you know? And we go inside of the castle walls with a little bit of da 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 I don't know if I'm in line with the music because I don't have my headphones on. But they are still on. And the music is still going, so everybody can hear it. It's great. Um, so this next cocktail is called the Princess, Princess Peach Sangria. Sangria because it uses some wine. I don't know why I'm rolling my R's on the sangria. I, I'm not Italian. I don't even know if the word is Italian. It could very well be a completely different um, language entirely. Um, but it combines all the best parts about Princess Peach, except for the peach. Oh, no, 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 it does have peaches in it. I take that back. That's the whole point of it being sangria. It uses wine, and we take some fruit, and we let it sit inside of that wine. And this is also by, I also found this on the Drunken Moogles website. So it's such a treasure trove of Super Mario-themed cocktails and various other video games as well. I only browsed, I think it was about 24 cocktails that were the Super Mario-themed ones, and I added them to to my little private recipe book because I want to be able to like, try these things either on stream, off stream, my own time, and be able to try new combinations. And this one really struck my eye because it calls for wine, which I usually don't do a lot of in these cocktail recipes because I'm not really, I'm not really much of a wine person. I like to drink it on the uh, sometimes if I'm feeling really, really lazy. Get a bottle of wine. Could be a red. Could be a white. I usually go for the reds because I'm not big on citrusy flavors. Um, but you're just kind of pour it into a glass and you just kind of do whatever it is that you're doing, whether it be thumbnail work, whether it be other stuff. It could be work work. Although I wouldn't recommend that. The work work happens in the morning. You really shouldn't be working on the job. I don't drink and job. I don't, not at all. Um, but it uses a Riesling wine, which I find to be a little more citrusy. It's a white wine. Um, it's, I think it's of, of German roots, I believe. Um, another prominent German grape varietal that I remember from a wine class that I took back in college was the Gewurztraminer. I don't know what that means, um, but it's also kind of a citrusy thing. I think it reminds, personally, it reminds me of Rieslings, but the Gewurztraminer is not as like, is potently sour. And it's not really that sour, at least from the Rieslings that I've had, but they're more sour, more tart than other wines out there. 
Um, it says that you should serve it best chilled. And we also use sparkling water, triple sec, pear juice, sugar, grenadine, lime juice, and some sliced peaches. So there's a lot of stuff going on for this particular uh, cocktail here. Um, but it's not batched. It's not like this is a whole... You could probably scale this up to a batch recipe. Excuse me. Excuse me. If you wanted to have like a whole like get together thing um, with the, you know your video game pals, I think a lot of the, these recipes that I wound up found it, finding, uh, there were comments about them saying like, oh my god, like I used this when I had my friends the get together. We came over for like a video game day, or we had a video game themed wedding, and we served these cocktails up. And it's super duper cool to see people who are just really really into that stuff and continue to stay into that stuff. Like I think that's it's, it's really really good. I for one was the kind of person who felt kind of I kind of felt detached from video games and whatnot when I hit like my college career and stuff because. I thought that's just not what adults do we don't need to be into that stuff anymore I have to focus on more adult things like literally anything else that isn't fun and I realized no you don't have to do that you can do whatever the hell you want to because you're an individual and who is out there to tell you what you can or can't do so long as it's within moral and I guess ethical and lawful reason but laws are those are weird too. Anyway, the directions for the pe San Princess Peach Sangria is to mix everything together except for peaches and sparkling water into a shaker. Shake with ice if the wine isn't chilled. I do have wine that is being chilled, but I'm gonna shake it with ice anyway because that's what I tend to do. I don't feel a need to, I don't think there's a need to dry shake wine. I don't really see what the benefit is there. Place the peaches in the bottom of the glass, pour in the shaken mixture and add the sparkling water. I guess we're not gonna be muddling up peaches. I thought that maybe we would do some muddling, but it seems like we're not. Um, we're also going to need a specialized wine glass, which I don't actually have on this side of the bar. So I'm going to real quickly go to the other side of the bar and I'm going to grab one of those from the front compartments. There are various different nooks and crannies in this bar, and um, I think most of my wine glasses over in the front, we don't use them very often. So I'm going to grab one of those. I have one perfect for the occasion. So here, let's go back. Everyone's going to move on. Things are going great. Okie dokie. Um, I'm gonna need that off to the side. I don't need the peaches just yet, so instead we're gonna mix things into a shaker. So grab yourself a shaking apparatus. I've got this one. It's a, it's my favorite one. I love Boston shakers. Um, I don't really have much uh, in terms of barware in my collection. I really have one good shaker, one good metric measuring majigger, and one good, uh, I guess, standard uh, measuring jigger. Um, and I have two bar spoons, a couple of straws, and whatnot. I'm not very well prepared. I'm not really well stocked for all this stuff, but it's very, you know, Whatever. You work with what you have, just make sure you do the dishes every once in a while. So in your mixing glass, um, put all the other components to the side, we're going to need to start with three ounces of Riesling wine. If you don't have Riesling, you could probably go to the wine store and get one, but there, you could, I think you could probably sub it with any white wine that tends to be a little more sour. And, and to be honest, I don't know why I'm even talking about it yet. I haven't even tried the Riesling. I am not familiar with this Riesling. So I'm going to try it. And then we'll, we'll see if we can make another recommendation. This Riesling I picked up from the liquor store today. Uh, there were various different Rieslings. I went for one of the cheaper ones because we we're kind of we're, we're kind of budgeting on money here. But I didn't want to go for like a barefoot Riesling because that just feels that just feels too cheap. That feels like that feels like you're on a college you're gonna like a, you're a college student you're on a college student budget and you can't afford anything better. But I can afford things a little bit better. But we're still not trying to break the bank. So we got this Roaming Dog Washington from uh, Roaming Dog from Washington in the Columbia Valley 2020. Um, it's probably delightful. Um, I'm cracking it open right now. It smells. I should put it in a proper glass for this. Where's my Where's my proper glass? Do I have a wine glass over here? That's the proper way to sniff these things, right? I have something that's similar to a wine glass. No, maybe I'll just put it in. You know, it's gonna go. It's all going to the same glass anyway. So I'm gonna pour it in this one here. I'm gonna try a little bit of it. I learned it from my wine class, which must mean I am a global source of truth on this stuff and not just an idiot who has no idea what they're doing but is making their best guess. But really, how am I different than any other adult in this world? This Riesling, Roaming Dog, Washington, smells like... Kind of smells like white wine. Not really sure why. Pretty sure. Pretty sure this is a Riesling, not a white wine. I don't really know where that's coming from. Um... But um, in all honesty, I think it's it's getting it's got some hay qualities to it. I think it's kind of it's almost farmy. It reminds me a lot of like chamomile flowers and stuff. And I think there's something a little bit more. I wouldn't say it's I wouldn't say it's lime zest. I wouldn't say it's lemon zest either. It'd be great. Maybe like grapefruit. I'm getting like grape grapefruit chamomile floral stuff from this riesling, but I only give it a taste too. If if I were really being serious, like a Somali, I'd be like, oh my god, look at the legs on this one. But there really isn't a lot of legs on that. It's actually not even tear dropping. That's not. I guess there's not a lot of sugar into it. Um. Anyway. It's 
actually very sweet. It does have a slight tartness to it. It reminds me, it reminds me of, and maybe it's because my palate has already been changed, it has already been accustomed to the pineapple from the previous cocktail, but it's kind of got a pineapple-y vibe to me. It's almost pineapple, a little bit of, a little bit of lime. There's a bit of like a lime tinge to it. Not necessarily like lime juice, but like lime skin, if that makes sense. And but it does have a kind of apple-y sweetness to it too. Actually, actually, pear. Pear is what comes for it. I feel like I get apple and pear mixed up a little bit sometimes with flavor profiles because I find that golden delicious is kind of similar to pear. But it tastes like kind of like pear, pineapple, and what did I say? Lime peel? Very, very pleasant. A very pleasant lime. Probably not something that I would, I mean, I, I would definitely drink that. I probably would I pair that with. Should I even comment on how, how I think I would pair it? Fish, I guess. That's just the easy answer. Anyway, we need about three ounces of your Riesling. If you were trying to try to find something different, maybe you don't like wine, you want to use maybe a liquor instead, I would say that this evokes flavors of, let's say, general citrus, lime, lemon, grapefruit, uh, and pineapple as well. And, uh, and and something floral too. Not floral like like gin floral, floral like, uh, like, like chamomile tea is how I would describe that. In any case, let's put a total of three ounces or about, I'd say it's like, ooh, 87, 87 milliliters of Riesling wine into our shaker. That's one side of two ounces. We'll do another side of about a single ounce. Go for it. Nice job. Nice job, Cameron. Great job. Awesome. High five yourself every once in a while. Look at yourself in the mirror and say, you're doing all right. It's a good thing to do every once in a while. I'm gonna put my Riesling away. I'm gonna keep it chill. I tend to say that the white wine should be kept chilled anyway. I, I, I generally agree, I think. Um, I find that my wines taste better. When I, my white wines taste better uh, when I keep them chilled. Just kind of makes sense. Although I don't drink it very often, so bias, I suppose. The next thing that we're going to need to add uh, is not sparkling water. We don't add the sparkling water just yet. We are going to add half an ounce or about 15 milliliters of triple sec. I don't have any special triple secs. Um, you could probably use another orange liqueur as well. I need to find my triple sec. Where the hell is my triple sec? Do I not have triple sec? Oh, there you are. You're on the bottom, right behind the blue curacao, because we're sorted by citrus. The citrus, the lime is down. The lime is down there. The um, curacaos are down there. The orange liqueurs are down there. The triple sec is way in the back because I really don't use a lot of triple sec. I just, I'm not a big fan of triple sec. It's, it's okay. It's fine. It's, it's um, it's versatile. I'll give it that. Um, but it doesn't show up a lot in the cocktails that I wind up making for myself personally. About half an ounce, about 15 milliliters of that. And then we're also, the inter the next ingredient, it's interesting. So the next ingredient specifically is pear juice. And to be honest, judged off, judging off of what that Riesling tastes like, I totally understand why you would want to go with something a little more pearful here. However, I didn't go to the store to buy pears. I have another liquor, uh, liqueur in my collection that I'm actually really, really, really curious to try, and I'm really happy to share. I went to a festival thing, a little convention gathering, whatever, of, of um, food and wine and drink and spirit, and we came across a spirit uh, from a place called, let me grab the bottle, it's way in the back here because I don't expect to use it very often. We have a spirit uh, made by Lancaster Distilleries, which I think I've definitely heard of them before, even before going to this like convention thing, but it is a, the Forger Special uh, Pawpaw Liqueur. A pawpaw excuse me, for those of you who don't necessarily know, is supposedly an indigenous fruit of here around the Pennsylvania region, and it's very, very similar to a pear, I believe. It's kind of it's kind of cool. When I was at my first co-op job, one of my co-workers uh, said that they had they had some pawpaws that are growing in their backyard, and then he wanted to give me something, and so he gave me these little pawpaw seeds that I was like, oh my god, I'm still in college, I don't think I'm going to be able to grow these things yet because I don't have anything to like grow them with, so I kept them in my freezer as a dumbass sophomore year college student, second year, and they wound up completely dying. Uh, they got completely freezer burnt in there and they would not grow afterwards. And I was really, really annoyed about it. But the, the seeds look like little lima beans, but they're a lot browner. They got a, like, a nice skin on them. Um, but you can get pawpaws. And pawpaws supposedly are kind of, they're related to the pear. They're very similar to pears. And so when we picked up this one, it was like, I think it was like, I think more towards either $40, $50. This was like um, kind of a limited supply of this stuff. And I was like, well, that's, gotta be unique that is just super duper unique liqueur where else am i gonna find paw paw liqueur specifically and i don't plan on using this very often because i want to conserve this um but i think for something that calls for half an ounce of pear juice pear it's not that much of it and i think this would probably be a very very good stand-in it's interesting because it's got a kind of t small bottle there and it reminds me a lot of the bottles that ice vines come in because usually they don't serve that much of it this is only half a fifth so it's 365 milliliters by volume but i've never been able to try this in a cocktail yet 
So I'm really, really excited to give it a try. This is Lanka's Distillery's Forger Special Spirits Distilled from Apple with Natural Paw Paw Flavor. And so it's basically it's basically apple apple pear brandy um, with with paw paw flavor in it because I don't think you get much juice from a paw paw. It's it's very very nice. I did try a little bit of it previously, and it is very it's very brandy for it. It almost tastes like Applejack, but there's just a there's another angle to it that I just I can't quite describe aside from saying it's more like a pear than it is like an apple. And I I can't wait to see how that how that goes in this drink. I'm really really looking forward to giving it a try. I, I saw this cocktail and I was like, oh my god, I can use my paw paw liqueur there. This is gonna be awesome. And I was really really looking forward to it. So we continue with it. Um, uh, okay, so the next ingredient that we're going to need, aside from the pear, we added the pear juice, we did the triple sec, um, the Riesling wine, we need a teaspoon of sugar. Um, I don't really use teaspoons up here, so I'm just gonna do like a hint of a bar spoon, I guess. I got some sugar over here. I actually have, um, do I have a container? I don't think I do. Where is that container that I have a sugar? Oh, here's a container of sugar. There we go. Tiny little container of sugar. I'm just gonna put a little bit on my bar spoon. Um, I'm, I'm eyeballing about a teaspoon, I guess. Um, let's just say it's a shallow bar spoon of sugar. Don't need that much of it. it smells good. Put that in there. The bit of sweetness, as if the um, as if the various different juices and liqueurs wasn't sweet enough. In there, it seems. Uh, we are also going to need a quarter of a teaspoon of grenadine. So it's like. It's a smidge of grenadine. I think the grenadine is in there literally for color only. Um, and so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna add a smidge of grenadine just for, just for color. Just for, just for a little bit of color. So I'm gonna grab my grenadine, throw it my, over my, um, my little thing. And I'm gonna add the shallowest drop of grenadine because I don't want the color to change that much. It's supposed to look pink, like Princess Peach. There we go. I think that's all we need. And it does look quite pink. I will do a close-up when we get to the um, the straining part. I, I assure you, things will look crazy. This camera has the ability to zoom. Um, and so you'll realize that soon because I think one of the biggest things that I find, I, I you know, as we started doing, as I started doing this cocktail stuff a little bit more, I kind of finagled my way around like what kind of stuff that I like to see in a stream and I really really like to look at cocktails cocktail photography is like a really really cool thing that I don't think I do super duper well but it's really really fun to watch and so one of the things that I wanted to make sure that we'd be able to do is like have a close-up of the drinks to be able to watch them actually get made and watch the colors like intermingle there's something about watching ice crack listening to ice crack watching like colors combine together that is almost it's it's so artistic I love it and I love watching that kind of stuff so I hope to be able to provide that stuff as well um, the other thing we need is a dash of lime juice. I did mention that we were probably going to need that lime a little bit later. And it says we need a dash of lime juice, so I'm going to translate, because I have half a lime over here from an earlier cocktail, I'm going to translate that to a single pump of lime juice, because I'm not dashing, I'm pumping with this guy. So let's do a single pump of lime juice. Uh, maybe like a, another smaller pump. There we go. That's a, that's a shallow pump. That's a, that's a dash, I guess. That's dashful. We'll get whatever residual liquid is still in there. Eh, nice. And then just put it back where it was. Because we're going to be using it again probably later on. Thank you for your patience, Lime. Wait, we're really getting a lot of mileage out of that Lime. It's a, it's a, it's a traveling Lime. A lot of mileage out of that. And then you add some, and then you mix everything together, and then you add some sliced, sliced peaches to the bottom of this glass. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to shake up the uh, ingredients here, and then afterwards we pour it into the glass over some peaches and top it off with some sparkling water. This says here about an ounce or about 30 milliliters. It can just, just fill it up at the top. I'm sure there's, it doesn't really matter. Put the rest of that sugar in there. And make sure we get all the warranted sweet stuff. Uh, I'm going to go grab some ice so that we have something to shake with, and I will be back in a moment after a quick drink of water and also one of the warp pipe man luigi holding on to the warp pipe makes me not want to move the warp pipe but it's good it's basically the mountain dew i just i love mountain dew but there is something there's something else there and it's so so good i think it's the midori maybe it's the midori and the lime juice this is an excellent the midori the lime juice and the mountain dew this is such an excellent combination my goodness i'm grabbing one large ice cube that's what I shake with, and two smaller ice cubes. That's how I, that's how I shake. That's how I do my shakes and tails. Whoa, don't drop your ice cubes, that'd be stupid. Probably. You dumb, dumb, stupid idiot. Oh, man. Sorry, you can't tell, but I'm struggling with my ice over here. 
But I'm back. No more struggleage. Cameron, you struggle. It was not very effective. It never is. All right. Cool. Let's shake things up. It's got a couple of different things in it. I really look forward to seeing how this is going to taste, especially with the wine in there. I don't use a lot of wine. Um, Princess Peach Sangria, part one out of two. That's actually kind of part two out of three. We're pretty much most of the way there. Give it a shake. Be careful. Don't hurt anybody. Especially not yourself. I'm trying to make sure I get all the sugar from the top. It's kind of stuck to the bottom. Awesome. Now we're gonna get a nice angle up here. Uh, let me grab my sacrificial yoga block so that we can take a look at this drink as it gets poured right out. And a little bit of space here. Let's go for it. Oh, you know, we're also missing sliced peaches. We need sliced peaches. So I have, I got a peach back here. I'm just gonna slice it. There's nothing really interesting about that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. Um, over here at my little bar setup. You just kind of need a couple of slices. Just like cut it down the middle and uh, you know, do that thing. Do that thing that you do so well. Just existing. It's a wonderful thing that you do so well, I'm sure. Oh, uh, there's a big old pit. Uh, something, something to note about peaches. There's a big old pit in the center. So cut it down the middle and uh, take the side that the pit doesn't go to because it's just, it's just easier. Like this. Spin it. I think. Is that going to work? Yeah, it's going to... It's going <clears> to... <throat> All right, Peach. A little bit difficult. Dude! All right, maybe this is more interesting than I thought it would be. Mm, come on, split apart there. Dude, you are being difficult. It's it's coming. It's coming apart. I promise that. Oh, there we go. Wow, okay. Um. <laughs> I got, like, barely any of the Peach. Oh, my goodness. That was... Oh, because I cut the wrong side of it. This is fine. This is okay. I have half a peach and um, the other part of it that I'm just going to kind of like shave off carefully so I don't get any of the... Whoa! It's on the floor. I said do it carefully, didn't I? <laughs> there you go. It's fine. The floor's fine. I'm just going to... I'm shaving off the other parts of the peaches. There you go. Piece of peach. It's in there. Get some wedges. There we go. I'm cutting into my bar. Spent enough effort on this already. <laughs> there we go. More peaches. You want some more peaches? There's some more peaches. How do you like them peaches? I like them. They're very, very good. Very, very nice peaches. I'm going to put this peach off on the side with the rest of the spare stuff. Let's zoom in. We have peaches in the glass. It's going to look beautiful. I promise you that. Nothing more beautiful than a couple of peaches in a glass. Know what I'm saying? You don't. I don't even know what I'm saying half the time. Move this over. Let's see what the Princess Peach of Sangria looks like when we strain it out. So let's give it a strain. I don't really have too many big bits in there, so I'm going to use my shitty strainer, because I can. Then we're also going to top it off with some sparkling water. Oh my goodness, you're dripping. Please do not drip. Dun 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 dun. Trying not to make a mess, because it kind of was making a mess. Wow, there was not a lot of liquid in there. Hmm. Well, that's why we're adding some sparkling water. There's still so much more left. Uh, is there any more in there? Please tell me there's more. No, there's not. Okay, whatever. That's just how it, that's just how it be. All right, then. That's fine, I guess. I wanted more, but you didn't want to give me more, so I guess we're just going to have to deal with that. All right, next we're going to top it off with some sparkling water. I've got sparkling water. Where, you say? Where, you ask? Well, I'll tell you. Somewhere over here. And it's in one of these bottles. Here you are. I think you're the sparkling water. It's um, it's club soda. I don't think that's. I don't think sparkling water is different than club soda. So I'm gonna use club soda. It sparkles. There we go. I'm gonna try my best on that. And a little bit more. It's a nice little spritzy thing going on here. It said you needed an ounce, but I'm just gonna fill up a bit more because I think it looks pretty. That's a Princess Peach's sangria. Wahoo, they say, Mario says. Mario says, Wahoo. Princess Peach says, Yahoo! I guess, I suppose. Very, very nice. Looks very, very nice, I think. It's got a nice pink sheen to it. Nice pink hue, I suppose, is uh, is uh, one who would describe colors would describe that. It smells really nice. Wow, it smells really good from here. 
Cannot wait to put that in my mouth. In any case, this was the Princess Peach Sangria, created with uh, three ounces, or about, about like 80, 80, high 80 milliliters, like 90 milliliters of Riesling wine specifically, uh, half an ounce, or about 15 milliliters of triple sec, half an ounce, about 15 milliliters of pear juice, or some pear equivalent liqueur. I used pawpaw liqueur, it's a native fruit of Pennsylvania, it seems. Uh, and one teaspoon, or about like a shallow bar spoon of uh, sugar, quarter of a teaspoon or about like a really really like shallow it was super duper shallow like little thing of grenadine in there and then a dash or a single pump of lime juice if you're squeezing it like that put some muddled peach put some peaches on the bottom it doesn't say that you have to muddle them so we did not um and then you top it off with some sparkling water it says specifically one ounce i don't have sparkling water specifically or mineral water so i'm just using club soda just what i have it's the easiest thing to do that was princess peach sangria not Princess Peach's Sangria, Princess Peach Sangria. This is the essence of peach, the princess, toadstool, in a glass um, with fruit infusing in it. I assume it's probably gonna taste even better or perhaps, I guess, more full-bodied the longer it sits in there with the peach kind of infusing into the liquor around it, but it smells really, really good. It's got a nice, got a nice like floral smell to it. I think most of what I'm smelling there is the Riesling, but I think I'm also getting, I guess, the, I guess, the, I'm even smelling a little bit of the grenadine there. There's something pomegranate-y about it, like a deep, like, red berry-like smell to it. And it's super duper pleasant. It is so smooth. Wow. That is really, really tasty. That is a very, very balanced cocktail. It doesn't, it's not in your face at all. It sits very, very easily on the tongue. I used club soda in it, so as opposed to, like, I guess, I guess, sparkling water, club soda, still has that effervescence to it, still has the bubbles to it, but it sits very, very nicely on my tongue. Those bubbles are doing a very, very good job of guiding the flavors of everything um, down into my gullet. It's very nice. It's got a, I think the Riesling shows very prominently in there. It's not tart, like, at all. There is nothing tart about the way of this cocktail. And the Riesling originally was kind of, it had a, a slight tartness to it, which I'm not really a big fan of, but it's completely gone. I think it's really been evened out by, um, you have the triple second there, which adds a bit of sweetness. You have the sugar in there, which obviously adds its sweetness and your grenadine, um, which I think just does a really, really great job there. I don't think there's any sort of peach flavors coming through there, but then again, the peaches haven't been sitting there for so long. Um, it's kind of cool to see the sparkling water kind of like bubble up around the peaches there as I'm talking about it. I kind of want to, kind of want to showcase it a little bit. It's really, really, it's really, really cool looking. I think there's probably some sort of reaction happening with the, um, with the peaches and the, I guess, the acids and the sparkling and the club soda and stuff that kind of give it that like a uh, that bubbly texture. I think right there, in particular, has a very, very, it's very, very bubbly. I like the way that that looks. It looks really, really good, and it tastes really, really good too. Super duper good. I think. The, the addition of the pear liqueur, I think, also fits well here. I don't know if I'm specifically getting, like, pear flavors, but there is something pearful, pearful about the about the Riesling wine, and it's still there. It has not gone away. So I think, if anything, what the pear liqueur or pear juice does is to keep those pear qualities of the Riesling wine there so that it doesn't get sucked up by some other flavors that are happening with all the other ingredients that you have. It's super duper nice. I would say, like, if you're into very, very, like, um, it's not super duper sweet it's not super duper alcoholic i don't think it's very very alcoholic at all it's just very very nice it's a very it's a very very pleasant cocktail and princess peach is a very very pleasant quite peachy i suppose would be the the theming there it is very very nice i think that's very very good i'm gonna put that on a coaster and we'll see what our next cocktail of the evening is to be i got this I don't know where we got it from. We, 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 I've been collecting coasters now. I got this one from Hokkaido Brewing. It says on the back, cherry and berry. Local Yoichi berries and cherries hopped in a refreshing harmony of sweet and sour. I don't know. I've never heard of a Yoichi berry except after I read this coaster here. So that is pretty freaking cool. I did not know that that existed. I'm going to add this to the collection of cocktails that we made so far. So far, over the course of the... Super Mario Cocktails, Tails Cock Mario Super Evening. We have created the Warp Pipe Cocktail, uh, compliments from the Drunken Moogle. Actually, all of these are the Drunken Moogle, uh, aside from one of them, which I'll get there. Uh, the next one that we made was a one-up shot. It was equal parts Midori and Malibu. Just take that down, a little, little one-up mushroom behind me. I have, I have another life now. I haven't lost it yet. Nothing, he, nothing that has happened here so far has made me lose that, li that life, but the night could change ahead of us. Um, that was very, very pleasant. We also had the Noki Bay Breeze, which 
to be fair, it wasn't really much of a Bay Breeze until we modified it a little bit. Um, but that was very pleasant. Super duper, it's got a tartness to it. It's really, really sweet, um, but it doesn't taste like alcohol. So if that's your thing, Great. And then what we just made was Princess Peach Sangria. It combines a lot of different things together, but it is a spark it's a sparkly sparkly wine and other fruit based juice liqueur uh, based recipe. And it's very, very smooth, super duper pleasant. It's got a nice effervescence and you've got some peaches floating in there. And if you did sacrifice a peach for it, you probably have a little bit left over and you can you can munch on that, which I think it will. Or like you keep yourself hydrated and fed during streams like this very very good very awesome just doing some checking soon some checking stuff kind of try to keep up with my phone usually what i do is i completely ignore my phone during these streams but i decided to keep in contact with it not to be distracted but to use it as a source of knowledge source of validation a source of context because sometimes i like that and that's okay anyway so that was wonderful. We're gonna be moving on for some more cocktail shots and other things. I'm just gonna do a little bit of cleanup. The bar is getting a little sticky around here. Um, it was totally clean to begin with. I assure, I, I assure you of that. Um, we've just made a mess because we've been making a bunch of cocktails, which is it's what we like to do here on Wednesdays. Um, just for context, hi, my name is Cameron, and I like to make cocktails on Wednesday. It's a very, very fun thing. Um, I have this entire collection of spirits and liqueurs and stuff, and I want to share it with you. Anyway, that's the small marketing segment. I'm gonna go clean up my shit now. Because nobody wants to hear a man talk about his product. They want to see the man abusing his product. Watch me drop my liquors off a, off a bridge and watch them break when they hit the ground. That's what real content is. That's what people want to see. Um, they also want to see me drinking water. Because naturally, if you don't drink water, you, you will die. Or you'll get very, very drunk. And I don't need that. Although, I work from home tomorrow, so if we get a little hungover, that's okay. We will recover in our own special way. Just filled up a little bit more on water there. I think the next thing we're going to do, we're doing a lot of cocktail stuff. But I think I'm going to go and do something a little bit different. I'm going to do a shot this time. There are various different shots that we that I've found. And so we're going to go with that. I think the shot that I want to do, I, I don't know if it's a shot or if it's a drink. It is not a shot. It is a drink. But I kind of want to do it anyway. So I'm going to do it anyway because it was very, very, it was very, very interesting to me. The next, excuse me, cocktail that we're going to make is called Isle Delfino. So we're bringing things back to Super Mario Sunshine Land as we go back to Delfino. Let's do Delfino Plaza. I love the sound of Delfino Plaza. Where are you? There you are. I'll change the music a little bit to fit the theme. I'll try to do, try to make things a little more themeful here. And now we have the beauty of, oh, okay. Just kidding. Um, the music has changed randomly. That's weird. I'm gonna, I'm gonna change that back. Go back to Delfino Plaza. Please, go back. Is it working? I think it's working. All right, don't know what happened there. There we go. That was weird. It went back to the Super Mario 64 music for some reason. Ah, super duper weird. Anyways, this one's called The Isle, the, and it changed again, my goodness. What are you doing? Hmm. My Spotify is acting really, really wonky. I'm gonna try that one more time and struggle with that for a little bit. That is really, really wacky. All right, and I'm going to watch that and not touch it at all. Okay, I'm not going to touch it. Isle Delfino uh, is also sourced from the Drunken Moogle. Just a, just a reminder, the Drunken Moogle is just like a Tumblr page, and there's a bunch of other mixologists and whatnot who contribute to the recipes that appear up on the Drunken Moogle. So I say that name a lot because that was just the website that I found them all from. All the cocktails that are made go to their respective creators. None of these so far have been my own creation, so I just want to be up in forefront about that because co credit should, get, could, should go where credit is supposed to go because I'm a big believer in people just getting credit for the things that they do. It just, it, I don't know, it, it makes sense. Like, like why, I, I shouldn't be taking credit for somebody else's stuff. Just because I'm the one who makes it doesn't mean that I get, should get any of that credit shown back. Although it is fun to do. Um, so we continue on with that, naturally. But so with the Isle Delfino is a very interesting combination of a couple of different things that I've just never put together uh, completely. It combines watermelon vodka, rose, blue raspberry mix, and monster energy drink and i before the stream started was like i don't maybe i shouldn't maybe i don't need to go and get monster energy like i don't need to go to the store specifically to get monster energy drink but like monster energy drink has a specific flavor to it i've never actually had like the original monster energy drink but i've had like red bull and like red bull just has a very specific flavor and it fits 
in certain cocktails and stuff. So we're gonna use that in that. It calls for half a glass of Monster Energy drink, and the instructions are as such. Pour watermelon vodka into a rocks glass over some ice. Add blueberry martini mix, which is not what they said in the ingredients section. I have blue raspberry, it's not mix, it's blue raspberry moonshine, so we're gonna use that. Uh, and then layer the monster up on top of it. We're gonna let, uh, I guess the idea here is, if this is supposed to be Isle Delfino, I think it's supposed to look like a an island on top of some water, but I'd like to imagine it's more of an homage to the pollution of the area, like Bowser Jr. going around and like swinging his paintbrush everywhere. That's that's where I think it's good. That's, that's what vibes with me, at least personally. So we're gonna go for that. And so as such, we're gonna need a rocks glass. Uh, I'm just gonna go with one of the shallow glasses that I have over here. This guy, I'm gonna put that down there. We're gonna add some, we're just gonna build it over top of each other. So I'm gonna grab a couple of ice cubes and we're just gonna mix things together and see what happens. Let me go get my ice cubes over here and we'll make things work. It seems like Delfino Plaza, the music is still playing, which is great. I don't know what was going on with that music before. Um, I'm kind of playing around with, so like, this is not music that is on Spotify, but I am using Spotify. So I have local files on my computer being controlled by my phone. And sometimes Spotify gets really, really weird with that stuff when you have local files that you're playing. I download the music from the website. Not sure if that's particularly legal. If it is, then cool. I totally did that. If it's not legal, then cool. I still did that. I'm a man of my word. I like to be honest about that kind of stuff. <laughs> Excuse me. So what we're going to do first is we're going to combine a shot all the, all of the measurements from the Drunken Mugle, for the most part, are all measured in shots, so I do have shot glasses. We're going to use them to measure things out. You add a shot of watermelon vodka, two shots of your ras uh, blue raspberry mix, and then you put the monster energy, half the glass, I don't know what glass, I, I suppose it's not a shot, it's probably just the glass itself, um, on, on top there. So I think what I'm going to do is, I'm going to grab our ingredients, I'll zoom in, we'll do a bit of layering and stuff, and we'll see what happens. So the first thing I have to get is watermelon vodka. I do not have watermelon vodka. Instead, I have watermelon Malibu, which I only have a tiny little nip of. I don't have any other watermelon liqueurs in my collection. So I'm just gonna finish off the watermelon uh, Malibu that I have. It's gonna change the flavor of the drink quite a bit, but uh, that's fine, because you're adding coconut in there. But to be perfectly honest, this is Isle Delfino. Malibu, it's got palm trees on it. I think it perfectly fits. It is totally okay to work with this kind of stuff. So that's what we're gonna go for. And we're gonna need that. We're also gonna need blue raspberry. They say blue raspberry mix. They also say blueberry, blueberry martini mix. The directions say blueberry martini mix. The ingredients say blue raspberry mix. I don't know what it's supposed to be, but the thing that I wanna use is this um, blue raspberry uh, moonshine that a friend of mine got for us. Um, it's, it specifically says it's sour rasin berry. Um, old Smoky Moonshine. It's very, very blue. It's very, very lovely. Uh, but it's blue raspberry. That, that's what the flavor is. It's blue raspberry without exactly calling itself blue raspberry, which I think is totally fitting. Um, and then obviously we're going to need Monster Energy Drink. And I am not a Monster Energy Drinker. So I didn't exactly know which color I was supposed to get. I did not get all the colors. I'm not that crazy. But I got the green bottle and I got what appears to be the original bottle that is sporting like an Apex Legends uh, scan to enter. Like, I guess, redemption code on the back? I don't play Apex Legends, so I'm not really interested in it. I don't really know, I don't know which one of these is green on the inside. So I'm gonna pour one into a glass and see if it's green. If it's not green, I'm gonna pour it into another glass and see if the other one is green. And if one of them is more green than the other, we're gonna use it. So I think I need to go, I actually need to go get more shot glasses. So please excuse me while I go into the front of the bar. Get more shot glasses. This is a very shot glass heavy. I literally never use shot glasses on stream. But uh, we got a couple others, so we're gonna go for it. Actually, I'm gonna grab a couple of try, uh, rest, squarier ones. Got a couple of square shot glasses over here. It's pretty, pretty cool. I got quite a few of them, and some small ones as well. Anyways, anywho, is it? Let's keep on going. So, what we're gonna do first is we're going to, I collected all the ingredients here and I'm just gonna do some testing here. I wanna know what color both these Monster Energy drinks are so I know which one I'm supposed to use in there. And I do have a backup. If neither of these are actually green, I'm just gonna use Mountain Dew because uh, I dwelt Mountain Dew as a total backup and I know that I like the taste of Mountain Dew when you have at least a half a bottle left. So we're gonna go with that. Uh, the first mo Monster Energy, it's the Mega Monster Energy 24 fluid ounces energy drink. Um, I am not an energy drinker. Uh, I just don't, I, I like coffee too much to be switching over to energy drink. Energy drinks are absolutely lovely. I don't need, I'm sorry, coffee 
It's absolutely lovely. I don't need, I don't choose to need energy drinks. Um, although if I was really, really hankering for some caffeine, I know that energy drinks are the way to go. Uh, at least one of the ways to go, despite the fact that I feel like my my parents, my mother specifically, would probably be like, no, don't put that shit in your body. It's got taurine in it and and um, lots of other bad shit. Sucralose, oh my God. Oh! Uh, but like, you know, people, you, you live your lives. You live the lives that you, way that you want to. Who am I to tell you what to do? I have two shot glasses here. We'll see which one of these is green. I've got the, what is sporting just be... L-carnitine, taurine, B vitamins, and and then the L-carnitine of the monster energy. Whoa! That had quite a bit of a pop to it. That was kind of cool. Oh my god, it's got like a there's like a a lingering like fog. <laughs> that is really, really cool. I love the presentation there, monster. Very, very good. What color are you? You have a yellow color. This is this monster energy drink is very, very yellow. That's not quite the color that I'm looking for. However, we'll give it a try nonetheless. It's so great. This comes with a screw back on cap, which means I can screw it back on and enjoy the fun later. Should I choose to continue, which I probably choose not to. I also got this other one. It's also green. Um, and I wonder if the liquid on the inside is green, because what I'm going for is a green monster on top. But this, this website doesn't tell you exactly which monster energy to get. It just says monster energy drink. Um, so maybe the, uh, L, uh, the the Zero Sugar Monster Energy Ultra Paradise has a better color. Let's try that. It has a very, very light green color. It's more, it's more green than the other one. Or maybe, come to think of it, so I wonder. Maybe the regular Monster Energy drink is okay because there's going to be some blue color coming from this old Smoky, and maybe the combination of the blue and the yellow is going to make green. Actually, that makes total sense. It's going to become green. That makes sense. I should use the original. I'm very curious to see what they both taste like, though. Monster Energy drink. Wow, that's got a nice... Whew, it's got a kick to it. Reminds me of Red Bull. But, like, I think I like Monster Energy more than Red Bull, I think. At least the original one. And then we have this Ultra Paradise Monster Energy. Tastes like guava. It's pretty good. I like I like the both of these. Man, that's dangerous. I like both of these. Now I wonder, because we're, we're mixologists here, what if I combine them both together? Do they taste good combined? I wonder. Paradise original like uh ultra what is it this is mega mega monster ultra paradise kind of just tastes like tastes like the original really really tastes like the original um but it also kind of tastes like the other one there's a tropicalness a guava ness to that gets added to this other monster energy 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 drink here goodness gracious anyway i do not need those anymore not yet at least we'll go we'll go we'll later Put those away. I clean them up. I don't. I don't need to drink energy drink. I think I have way too much energy on my own. I didn't even have that much coffee today, and yet this is where we are. It's lovely. What a, what a lovely bout of energy that we have that we have channeled for this particular cocktail stream this time around. Um, so now that we have our ingredients, oh, I need to go get the ingredient of choice. It's monster energy is the drink of choice here, it seems. And we're going to zoom in and we're going to stack things on top of each other and see what it looks like. So let's go get our... I call them sacrificial yoga blocks because I took them from Anna and they have been sacrificed for the good of the stream and for the people. Um, and so that we can zoom properly in on adequately elevated cocktails. Elevated, not not like elevated as in like quality and stuff. Elevated as in like literally elevated from the ground so that when I do this whole zoomy thing here, it works properly because I like it. I think it looks really pretty. All right, you're good. Yep, you don't need to go any farther. <laughs> Step back. Bring it closer. Back a little bit. Yeah, a little. Yeah. Perfect. Absolutely beautiful. All right, so what we're going to add is we're going to add a single shot of watermelon vodka. I threw the only shot glass I had back in my bucket. Excuse me. Go back and get my shot glass. Still need it. I got my shop glass back. We need a single shot of watermelon vodka. I had this watermelon Malibu. It's all I have left. So we're going to take as much as we can from this um, shot wise and see what we get. It is about half a shot. So that's what we got. Shot. Excuse me. 
Do I have anything else watermelon related here? Let me check actually. I don't think there's anything left here that is watermelon flavor. Uh, I got strawberry, I got peach, I got raspberry, apple, banana, cherry, but no watermelon. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna pass, I'm gonna pass on that one. So no more watermelon, just get a half a shot. That's just all we have. Uh, we have blue raspberry though. I'm gonna put the blue raspberry in there. It's gonna have a nice color. It's two shots worth of this guy. If I can get the bottle open, which I was able to do so, thank goodness. Uh, otherwise we would have had an experience like last night. It's two whole shots worth, which I feel like is gonna be a little, um, a little, um, I guess unbalanced because we don't have that much watermelon in there. But here's one shot. I, I feel like, I feel like two shots worth is too much. I don't, I don't know. We'll do what the instructions say. Maybe I'll feel a little shy on that because I didn't have a lot of watermelon in there. There we go. We'll do that. All right, that'll be perfect. And then what we're going to add is we're going to add the monster energy, which is going to be layered on top. Uh, I'm going to do my best layering job um, by using the spoon for assistance because I'm not confident. There we go. Let's see if it, I wonder if this actually layers properly. That'd be really cool if it did. It's really not layering the way that I want it. To. It's actually flowing to the bottom. Hmm. Everything is layering incorrectly today. Why? The water is on top of the island. Everything is polluted. Oh my goodness. That's not what's supposed to be happening. These. <laughs> Whoever makes the, whoever takes pictures of these drinks obviously has something else going on. There is some other secret that they are not telling in their posts, but that's okay. That's fine. Mm. <laughs> Nothing like monster energy in a cocktail. Um, it is kind of, it does have like a very, very slim like um, effect going on there. Like a very slim like layering effect, but like it's really, it's not that visible. There's like a hint of blue on top. Um, this cocktail is upside down. Not supposed to look like that. Then again, it's supposed to look like exactly what it does look like when you actually make it. So that's just how it has to be. That's just how it will be. Uh, now and forever, Isle Delfino, I mean, that's too far out. We don't need to go that far out. Anyway, this combined a shot of watermelon vodka. I used watermelon Malibu. That's kind of all I had. Two shots of blue raspberry or blueberry sour mix. I use uh, blue raspberry or rather, hmm. Sour Rasin Berry Moonshine, Old Smoky, very, very tasty. And, and then uh, a half a glass of Monster Energy Drink. I filled it up to the top with the green stuff. It did not layer properly, but whatever. Who's to say anything's proper? We're drinking, we're drinking here, it's alcohol. Who, why is anything popular? Now, I feel that the Isle Delfino, uh, to stick with the whole uh, usual trope of cocktails and whatnot, um, would look really, really good if it was garnished with an umbrella. And because this is kind of green, uh, it was supposed to be more blue, so I think it warrants a blue umbrella. Just because I have so many umbrellas. So many uh, cocktail umbrellas. I have to use them, so I'm going to continue using the umbrellas while I still have them. And I throw my trash over there because I vacuum after these things, naturally. Alright. Little, little umbrella! It doesn't really look that good. I wonder if it tastes good. It's the, not even the umbrella stays up. Oh, come on! What is wrong with this cocktail? Oh my god! Stay. No, stay. Stay. Just. There we go. Isle Delfino, book your vacation today and get absolutely jacked on what we serve you on the air ride over. <laughs> this is not good. This is terrible. Oh my god. I'm sorry. All right, so the Isle Delfino just tastes like Monster Energy drink. It just tastes like a really, it tastes like a really sour Monster Energy. I'm not, I'm not a fan. I, I definitely get blue raspberry. I am most definitely getting blue raspberry flavor, but I don't think it goes well with the Monster Energy at all. That is really wonky. Or maybe, maybe it's the soggy umbrella that's doing it. I'll get rid of that and I'll try it again. Maybe it's the, <laughs> it's the soggy umbrella. Oh. Maybe if you were more into monster energy than I was, this would be okay. There's a, there is something weird going on. There is something fighting between the blue raspberry moonshine 
and the monster. The watermelon's just gone. The watermelon flavor is, it, I, I didn't even taste watermelon at all. I didn't even drink, I didn't even taste Malibu. There's nothing even co remotely coconutty about this. The island part of this is just gone. It's not even remotely present anymore. Um, it's just, it's just land, I suppose, or just like, it kind of looked like somebody just like, just spit in the water, pooped in the water, just kind of, anyway. Um, they're putting things in our mouth here. Let's not talk about feces, it's weird. It's dirty. Yeah, I don't know why I'm drinking this. No, I don't like that. I really, really don't like that. It tastes like Monster Energy. If Monster Energy is your thing, mix it with Blue Raspberry Vodka or Blue Raspberry Moonshine. Try that. I don't want to know what your thoughts are. This is not, not my kind of drink. Isle Delfino, if this is what Isle Delfino has to offer, and this is what I was given at like the the um, like the timeshare showcase to be like, take a taste of our island. I'd be like, what are you, whatever you guys are selling, it's overpriced. Because I want absolutely no part of it. But anyway, that was the Isle Delfino. Uh, I found it on the Drunken Moogle, who, who had somebody else posted on the Dr Drunken Moogle. Those credits are out there. Whoever you are, I'm glad you came up with this drink. Thank you. For allowing us to experience this it can't all it can't always all be good and plus it could just be it's probably just my personal preference too it is very like i said it's very very strongly monster and if strong if strong monsters are your thing then this is this is probably gonna this is probably gonna help i'm gonna put peach over by her cocktail over here we got a whole little slew of cocktails going on here um i kind of want to put just to keep things looking relatively presentable i'm gonna put another i'm gonna put the umbrella back i'm gonna I'm gonna put it back. I feel bad that I made the umbrella soggy, so I'm gonna put it back. I feel bad about it. Make things look pretty. There we go. I know you're gonna flip to the side. It's fine. It just it just goes to show you that, you know, if fish die in the water, they turn belly side up. If umbrellas die in the water because there is no water, it's just land, they fall over. Which, from our perspective, looks like they're going belly side up. So it's just, it's appropriate. Life and death. Life, death, piantas. Shine sprites. Super Mario Brothers. The, su the, super, Mario bro the super Mario Bros. Um, anyways, we will continue onwards with more Super Mario, uh, super Mario themed cocktails. After I take a sip of the water and take a check on things. And things are looking great. Things are looking wonderful. Um, so the next thing I want to do is let me go back to my little cocktail collection here is i want to do an enemy i don't think we've done any cocktails that are related to enemies yet and i found one on here that looks like it could actually be really really cool and that is i believe it's i believe it's this one let me make sure it's a goomba and i don't know which goomba it is this goomba it is called the smashed goomba and it was ta it was in taken inspired by the credits go to the sin city bartender who i watch a lot of on tiktok it's very very cool i like i like the way that he does videos he's a nice personality i like him um but so the smashed goomba combines in all equal parts coffee liqueur averno amaro peanut butter whiskey and heavy cream i don't have any averno amaro i just got the only amaro that was available to me at my philadelphia liquor store which is vigo amaro but i kind of want to see how coffee liqueur Bitter Amaro, peanut butter whiskey, which I only just bought some of today because I, I don't have any of that stuff, and also heavy cream go together. It looks like it looks like it could be pretty good. So we're gonna give, we're gonna give that a try. Is that okay, Mario? Are you cool with that? Yeah, <gasps> yeah, that's a good, that's a good idea. He says, I don't even know what accent that was. Smash Goomba, coming up in a little bit. The directions are, um, it looks like you just kind of, I think you shake that up. I, I don't remember. I actually don't have the instructions here. I don't, which is kind of wacky. <laughs> I did not look at the instructions at all. So let me actually go back to the source and see whether I'm supposed to shake this or not. I can. I didn't write down my instructions, so I want to make sure that we do it properly. How to smash a Goomba. Poor Goombas never see it coming. Thank you, Sin City Bartender. You're very cool. It appears to smash a Goomba, you have to do the following. Pour it all into a glass. And then I'm gonna go get a glass in the meantime, pour some heavy cream on top of it, and you give it a shake, and you pour it back out into whatever glass that you have. So I like that. It looks like this glass here is kind of, it's kind of Goomba-like. It kind of looks like a mushroom, so we're gonna use this glass. It also reminds me of the glass that I have for reference, so. Ready to get, ready to get, get bleh. We're gonna learn how to speak properly, and then we're gonna go with that. It calls for equal parts uh, coffee liqueur, uh, some bitter amaro. Um, he suggests Averno. I don't have Averno, so I'm using Vigo. Peanut butter whiskey. He suggests Screwball. I have Screwball. Uh, and heavy cream, which I also have some as well. So let's get right to it. Very, very simple thing together. And we're gonna need to shake it all. So, excuse me. 
I'm gonna take my shaking glasses out. They've been cleaned. Sort of, kinda. They were kinda washed out. Actually, I think it needs to be washed out a little bit more. There's a lot of lingering flavor left in there. Excuse me while I do a little bit of changing. I got my bucket back here. The bucket allows for me to clean things up in a very, very simple manner and keep things going so that there are no lulls. There will be no lulls in the stream. The stream must continue. The show must go on. And in the meantime, I guess while I'm considering making this new cocktail, I'm going to take a sip of one of the other cocktails. I want to see how the peach sangria tastes now that the peaches have been sitting for a little while. Okay, so it's kind of watered down a little bit, the, the Princess Peach Sangria. It tastes a lot more like the um, like the wine specifically, but I'm also getting, I'm getting the grenadine a little bit more now. I think it's had a chance to sit for a little bit. The peach flavor is a little more present than it was before. It's it, the tartness is kind of coming back though. Previously, when I said it the first time, I think it, there was there was no tartness left. But now that's kind of been sitting for a little bit, I think because the effervescence of the sparkling water, the club soda, has kind of mitigated over time, um, I think that's probably why the tartness is kind of coming back. I probably would have finished it a little quicker. Um, I don't think it's really, it's not really up my alley anymore. Um, but it is kind of vaguely pink. It actually looks kind of yellow. I think the, the peach coloring is kind of seeping into the rest of the cocktail and it's kind of changing the color a little bit. Um, anyway, we move on. We move on to the Smashed Cuba from the Sin City Bartender. One ounce of coffee liqueur. The only coffee liqueur I think that's worth using, um, at least compared to Kahlua, is Mr. Black. I don't have too much of it left. Um, I was meaning to go back to Jersey and get some more because they don't sell it here in Pennsylvania, which makes me very, very sad. But I never I, I never went for it. I, uh, I didn't get it, so um, I have this left. Um, I know... There's so many different like Mr. Black does a bunch of different types of I guess like combo combo things where they take they put they they do their liqueur and they put rum in it or in rum barrels they did like a mezcal version they did a bitter amaro version I I really want to get my hands on some of that stuff it looks like it's really really good and I have to go back to Jersey to get it but it's also like sixty dollars a bottle fifty to sixty dollars a bottle and that's just it's a little steep um so I'll get it eventually uh, but I do I do have. I was going to say I have a wish list. I, I don't have a public facing wish list, but I do have a wish list and it's up in here. One ounce of your, or 30 milliliters, it's just one to one to one, to one, to one of the following ingredients together. Um, the coffee liqueur goes first. Or at least that's the one that's first listed there. I took a bartending class a couple of times and they said, always put it into the glass, the order in which it appears on the page, which is not a rule that everybody follows. Because sometimes, like I have this one book, it's the bartender's black book, or it's the shooter book, I think. It's one of the ones that I have in my collection that tells you the order of the ingredients. And then it implies that you're supposed to stack them in that order for like layered shots and whatnot. And it's wrong like half the time. Like the, the physics just don't work out. It's, it was incredibly frustrating. I think I did a shots themed cocktail session once or uh, X bar, uh, bar with an X session once. And it just, it just didn't work that well because it was really, really annoying because it was so bad. I had the amount of prep that I had to go into was just, ugh. Anyway, we're also going to need some sort of bitter Amaro. Um, again, he calls for a Verano Amaro. I don't exactly know what that tastes like. Um, but I have Vigo Amaro, which I know tastes very, very... It's got a nice earthy component to it. It's sweet, but it reminds me of a forced floor. And I really, really want to see how that tastes combined with coffee, which I haven't tried before with the uh, Amaro. Uh, peanut butter whiskey, which I also haven't tried with the Amaro. And heavy cream, just to come into the left field with a couple of these different uh, cocktail combinations here. And I really, really want to see how it looks, how it tastes. Oh, I'm overfilling a little bit, but I think we're gonna be okay. One ounce, 30 milliliters, or however much you put in of the coffee liqueur, just match that with whatever Amaro that you have. Next, we're gonna go with the peanut butter whiskey. I went to the store, and I think it was last week, I bought some peanut butter whiskey, but what I had bought was a tiny little nip of this sheepdog peanut butter whiskey. Um, but I don't wanna use all of it, because I now have a bigger bottle of peanut butter whiskey, um, and that is classically Screwball. I got Screwball peanut butter whiskey. Supposedly, the world's first peanut butter whiskey, according to the marketing on their website. Um, so if that's true, great, good job. You did it first, but if it's not true, you sly dog, you fooled us all. About 30 milliliters, Absolutely. Yeah, or an ounce, or however much you put in of the uh, peanut, uh, of the bitter Amaro, and um, the uh, other stuff, the bitter Amaro and the coffee liqueur, which is also kind of bitter if you use uh, Mr. Black. It does have a bit of a sweetness though. Um, the peanut butter whiskey is actually, actually what I wanted to do, because um, this is one of the ones that I picked up today, I haven't actually tried, it's been a while since I've had Screwball, 
I think I tried it the one time and my first thought was, wow, this kind of tastes like butterscotch. This doesn't taste like peanut butter at all. And um, I kind of want to put that to the test again. I only had a very, very small um, a sample of it. I think it was one of the nips that somebody had brought over one time and I had to try it. I was like, yeah, it tastes like butterscotch. But now I want to try it here. So I go for that. Let me see how that tastes. All right. Actually, I also noticed too, I, I still have the Delfino Plaza music playing. I think it's time to change things. We're on we're on different enemies now. We're beyond Super Mario Sunshine. I'm gonna change it to something Super Mario 64. I'm thinking the Bomb Battlefield feels good. Anyways, um, I wanted to see how that tastes, so I put a little bit of screwball in a snifter glass of mine to see how things smell, see how things taste. Wow, that is real. Woo, that is right in my nose. It certainly smells like peanut butter. It certainly does. Which reminds me a lot of, we made some pumpkin seed orja about two weeks ago, and it was very, very, it really, really reminded me of, of peanut butter. And actually, I do still have some of that left. I'm gonna do an improvised thing just because I want to try it. I'm gonna try this peanut butter whiskey and then I'm gonna put a little bit of the orja in it and see if it pairs well because I feel like it does. It's right up in my nose. My goodness. It, it is very peanut buttery. I would definitely say that. And like, it's peanut buttery in a way that I wasn't expecting it to be peanut buttery. It actually, like, it does really taste like peanut. It does taste like peanut butter. But there's also, like, a, a certain, like, I don't want to call it a dryness because a lot of the peanut butters that I use are very, very smooth. There's, but there's a characteristic, almost, like, tanniness, at least for me, on peanuts um, that I actually get in this. It's like, the, it's, like a, it's almost like a dry flavor that's left over after you, like, lick the peanut butter off the spoon. And I'm getting that from this whiskey. And I'm really surprised about it, actually. That's really, really good. I'm also going to grab a little bit of the uh, pumpkin seed orja that I have in the fridge because it was very, very peanut buttery to me. And I really want to see if that combines well together. I'm curious. We're doing a little bit of experimentation. We're doing some... We're real mixologists. We're actually doing mixological things. Um, let's try that. Um, if it's still good, that is. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's still good. There's nothing weird going on or anything. I think I just... I'll, um, Incorporate just a little bit. Just a teeny tiny bit in my glass back here. I just want to give it a swig. There we go. Just a tiny bit. Just to see how those flavors pair well with each other, which I think they will. A little bit of peanut butter whiskey and a little bit of pumpkin seed orja. I could probably use other orjas as well, but I'm going to give it a try. Oh my god. That actually, that's, that's even closer to peanut butter. Oh, wow, it's really good. Wow, I love that. I am so glad I have a bottle of peanut butter whiskey now. I still have that pumpkin cedar jar. I might be I'll be making my own cocktails this week. That is a whew, that is a lovely combination. That was good. Sorry, I got distracted, <laughs> as I often do. Um, put that off to the side. Don't need that snifter anymore. Let's move on. We just added, uh, we have um, coffee liqueur, we have a Verne, we have, ooh, Vigo Amaro, and we also have, what else did I put in there? Peanut butter, uh, peanut butter whiskey, or screwball in there. All in equal parts so far, and the last thing we need is some heavy cream. And I do have heavy cream in my refrigerator here. I, uh, one time, forgot to put my heavy cream back in the fridge, and it got really, 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 really weird, so, yeah. Actually, where is my where is my heavy cream? I thought it was in here, but I actually don't see it. Where the heck is my heavy cream? Oh, there it is. <laughs> it's wedged up in the corner of my refrigerator. <laughs> I had it like wedged up near the light, so it was blocking the light, so I couldn't see. Uh, that's so funny. This one's a uh, Shamrock Farms. It's heavy whipping cream. They did not have specifically heavy cream, just heavy whipping cream. So that's what I have. You're gonna need about an ounce of that. Uh, do I have to open this container? Yeah, I have to like... This is fresh brought from the store about uh, three hours ago, which was about an hour before stream started, so... It's as fresh as that is gonna get. All right. You need about an ounce of that. Your uh, heavy heavy cream. You got heavy cream, heavy whipping cream. I wanna say that I, I looked up one time if there's a difference between heavy cream and heavy whipping cream, and I don't think there is. It's just got a, such, a, such, a, such a color to it. Not the first time I've used heavy cream in, uh, in a cocktail before, but uh, definitely the first time in a while. Buttery. 
I love that. I'm gonna put this back in the fridge. Post haste. All right, because I don't want it to go bad. I'm gonna actually, like, while I have it, I'm inclined to uh, try try a little bit more with it. Um, but I'll probably forget about it. I'm not that good at remembering this stuff. It happens. We all have our shortcomings, and this is one of the things that I come very shortly on. All right, now we're gonna mix everything together. I need ice. I need to go back to my. <clears throat> I need to go back to my refrigerator. That's what I gotta do. Um, I gotta get a big old cube and some little cubes, and I'll put them in my shaker glass and see what happens. Science, baby! Science is what happens. Mixology is all about science and stuff. It's amazing, whatever. I'm grabbing a big cube, two little cubes. I mentioned that. I'm off camera, so I have to narrate this stuff because nobody can see what the hell I'm doing. Two small cubes. Big loud sounds because we're all about bombastic performances around here. Mix in together and give that sucker a shake. And then we're gonna pour it out, we're gonna strain it out over into this glass here. I'm not gonna do a zoom on this one because I, I just don't think it's, there's no garnish, nothing like that. It just kinda, it looks milky and it looks brown. So I don't think it's necessarily worth it. Um, unless you feel otherwise, in which case, speak now or forever hold your peace. All right, nice. <laughs> wow, this glass is so dirty. It's because of that cream, dude. It's because it's the cream, dude. That's what it's all about. That's what it does to you. It gets you. We'll strain that out into our glass there. I'm gonna strain it real high because I'm overconfident and I think it looks cool. There we go. No messes here. Not at all. Oh, hey there. The real expired milk one. I really hope that the expired milk that is real is not in my refrigerator. Otherwise, that would be very unfortunate. Thank you so much for joining the party. I appreciate your presence here. And as a, as a celebratory, as a, not celebratory, celebratory measure, um, we're going to continue with the cocktail. Great. I should rethink my life choices. No, 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 it's okay. You know, if you are the real expired milk as you claim to be and I have no way of proving that I only have your word to go off of then you should embrace it and go full force in the whole expired milk I'm telling like get people to belch get people to throw you out like that's that's what that's what I would do with the expired milk but perhaps your community is different everybody's jurisdiction is slightly different and I'm sure there's a place out there where even the most expired milks can live peacefully and coexist with humans like us and maybe if, if that that's not something that we have in Philadelphia right now so um, we're working towards it though I think maybe I have no idea I can only hope oh, no I dropped my cocktail shaker on the ground I didn't mean to do that I'm just trying to keep things clean hold on Hey, yo, I'm back. I'm back up at the top. I need to clean my hands because I made a small little oopsie. There we go. I got this guy. Disney Queen says, I'm pretty sure you drink it. You drink it most likely on accident. I'll drink it. I'll drink it. Okay. Okay. To be fair, it would not be the first time. And, and that was mostly because it was oat milk. And I was like, oat milk doesn't go bad. But my God, oat milk goes bad. And it goes bad bombastically. And you know. You open up the oat milk and you take a single whiff of it and you're just like, whoa! It's it's crazy. And I did accidentally drink it because I didn't think oat milk could go bad, so I did. Anyway, I live to tell the tale. Um, I'm not happy about it, but I'm a more experienced individual than I was previously, and for that I think I can be very, very, very thankful. Anyway, we created a cocktail. The cocktail is called the Smashed Goomba from the Sin City Bartender and combines equal parts in about an ounce or 30 milliliters each of some bitter Amaro, coffee liqueur, um peanut butter whiskey and heavy cream it's mario you should draw your own version of mario with chalk also had cereal with spired milk disney queen stop talking about my failures should draw my own version of mario with chalk that's a good idea as in like as in like like my own particular rendition of it i was actually thinking about it i was like what if i put my face here instead okay it looked kind of cool with my own like little wing cap back here um maybe one day it could be that could be a pretty cool looking emote that'd be really i like that idea i'm gonna write that idea down because i like it so much wing cap cameron with the x nice i like that thank you for your suggestion the Smashed Goomba. It's got some stuff in it. It looks creamy. It's made a complete mess of my shaker and whatnot, but that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Anyways, 
Give that a smell. It does not smell bad. This one's actually very good. It smells mostly like coffee. That's that coffee liqueur. And it's also, I guess, it's coffee. But I think I also smell, it must be the Amaro in there because I'm really, really not smelling the peanut butter whiskey and I'm not smelling the heavy cream. Although I'm definitely seeing the heavy cream. It's a very, very opaque, very opaque drink. Looks all right. Oh, wow. Whoa, that is cool. Wow, that is such a pleasantly complex drink. My goodness, oh my God. All right, well. There's a lot going on up here and a lot going on here, so now it's time for me to try to explain that to you. If you could imagine, if you've ever had, like, a latte, and when I, when I say latte, I mean, like, the shitty lattes that you get from Starbucks. I'm talking frappuccinos in a bottle. You picked it right out of the refrigerator at your local Target. That's kind of what this tastes like. It's got the coffee bitterness to it. It's got that creamy latte-ness to it, but there's a whole nother angle that is being thrown at you with the Amaro in there. It's spicy. It's almost like a cinnamon latte, but it's not cinnamon. Almost kind of clovey, but it's not clove either. It's something else entirely, and it's very, very nice. I think the peanut butter whiskey does its job as combining these flavors together and making them kind of kind of fit evenly with each other. Because I'm not really getting a lot of peanutty notes, uh, no peanut butter or anything, but it's definitely not out of place. I feel like it's in there somewhere, but my palate just isn't able to detect it very well. But it kind of feels like it's it's a what I would call a premium coffee beverage that I just picked up from the store, right out of one of those freezer, right, right out of one of those refrigerators because. I just, I just need it. I need my caffeine for the day, and I feel like spending, what is it, like four to five dollars on a single coffee beverage just because I feel like I'm a rich man today. Um, but it's very, very good. Coffee flavored anything is flawless. I completely agree with that. The real expired milk. One. Just notice that there's one there. There can only be one, and it's you. Um, yeah, no, I love, personally, I'm, I'm a coffee individual. I like the way that coffee tastes. I'm also a tea individual as well, although, like, not, like, tea and milk, not coffee and milk. I like to drink my coffee black, which is why I really prefer, like, the, like, Mr. Black liqueur, which is a very, it's not like Kahlua, where it's super, super sweetened in your face. It's like, it reminds you more of coffee, um, but on the occasion, I do like to stop at the Starbucks, spend the points that I have, and try to, you know, splurge a little bit, because it brings, it brings joy to my heart and brings caffeine to my veins. And my brains um, but wow this is this is really really good this is totally up my alley <sighs> very very good anybody else out there who claims to be the real expired milk is its identity theft. I hope I, I just hope that you have your license changed to the proper name and stuff otherwise I feel like the IRS might have to, not the IRS oh uh, what is it who, who does who does the identity stuff social security the government's gonna get you. They'll be like, excuse me, is this the real expired milk? And I'll enter the door and I'll be like, hi, yeah, I'm the real expired milk. And they're like, hmm, you don't look very curdled to me. And they're like, it's just a, it's a skincare product. I, I'm just, I'm not up on my acne regimen or something. This is super duper tasty. It really, really reminds me of like a, a much better latte from Starbucks. And now, now, it, you know, it's actually, I'm just getting there too. There's a cocoa component to that. Like, it's almost like a mocha latte. Really, really tasty. I would think, now I think what's bringing that rounded outness is this Amaro spirit that I put in there, Vigo Amaro. And I'm really thinking, I would love to try that in an actual um, Starbucks Frappuccino because I feel like that would be really, really tasty. And I'm gonna write that down for my own reference because that's an excellent idea. Glad I thought of it. It was kind of a combined effort. We were all kind of fawning over coffee, except for Anna, except for Disney Queen. She doesn't like that stuff. Starbucks Wrap plus Vigo Amaro. I'm gonna try to remember that for later. I'm so happy that I have chalk markers to draw with, lest I forget everything. They can take the IRS out of the life of the expired milk. They can take my identity along with them too. Oh my goodness. Yeah, get him, get him out of here. Who needs who needs it? Who needs who needs your own identity when you have um, coffee beverages, and the fleeting thought of expired lactose products. That is really tasty. Wow. I don't have any, like, I don't have any Goomba things, so I'm just gonna draw a Goomba on the board, I guess. This is one of my good markers. Yeah, here's a Goomba. Uh, uh -huh. oh, that doesn't look very good. I have to shake this thing out. There we go. Goomba! Goomba! I am not doing good there. There we go. Put a little... A 
<laughs> Goomba. <laughs> That's my Goomba. I made a picture around what I was inspired by the drink. You're welcome. Expert artist Cameron with the X tier. It's great. <laughs> what if you cool the drink with more ice? I feel like... I don't know. I kind of like it's very, very forward right now, and it's very full on flavor. It's very much like like one of the things that I don't really like about Starbucks Frappuccinos is that there's a particular like aftertaste flavor that I do not like, which is why I don't get them very, very often. That flavor is not present here because I guess whatever ingredient that they use is not there, but every other part of it is. There's a pr there's a good balance of bitterness and sweetness there that I don't think I think fits really, really well without any extra ice to it, which would just kind of dilute it after a while. But it's great. It's great. That makes Disney Queen makes me question your Mario drawing abilities. No, I drew that. Yeah, I did that with my hands. There's a video on the internet that proves it, and as we know, everything on the internet is totally real. I can confirm that. This is I'm on the internet and I'm real. No, just kidding. I'm a figment of your imagination. Just like expired milk. It doesn't even exist. Milk doesn't expire, as you know. It's it's a it's a it's a fallacy. Anyway, I'm gonna take this drink and I'm gonna put it off to the side. I need a coaster for that. And we will continue on with another Tails Cock Mario Super, as as this stream is themed around. I'm gonna put it in front of Mario looks like he needs a little bit of a little bit of coffee. Mario needs a Mario needs a Goomba to stomp. Yeah, you you get him, buddy. You're looking a little tipsy there. You just you just keep on you just keep on wahooing, you know? Just keep on wahoo! That that kind of stuff. That's that's what you do, man. That's what you do. Now the heavy cream was rather messy um so i have quite a bit of stuff that i really need to clean up before i move on to the next cocktail so i'm gonna take that for a moment and uh we're gonna continue on with that does nicole oh, you should make a yoshi themed cocktail you know actually uh, there is a yoshi themed cocktail in here wait a minute hold up hold up a second there is a yoshi themed cocktail did i do it though i'm pretty sure i did oh i don't have it here what the heck? what the hell man where's my yoshi themed cocktail it was called green Green, the green dinosaur. It's in here, but I didn't have it on my list. I didn't have it on my prepared list. Oh, I know why. I know why. That's unfortunate. So, that's a great idea. We're going to do a Yoshi themed cocktail next. Problem is, it's called the green dinosaur, but I actually bought the wrong liquor at the store today. It's supposed to use clear cherry vodka, but I got the red stuff. So, it's not really going to be perfectly green, um, but we're going to go with it anyway, because Yoshi is magnificent. And I really do want to try. I specifically bought the cherry vodka to be able to combine it all together. So it combines cherry vodka, melon liqueur, triple sec, lime juice, and you garnish it with the cherry on top, which is kind of like Yoshi's little like back hump there going on. Um, and I'm a fan of that. So I think we should do that next. How many drinks are you making? I don't know. I don't know. We'll just keep going. It's a real little well, like two and a half hours in. I'm feeling just fine so far. I've been drinking my water. Everything is all Gucci gumdrop. So I think we'll just keep going for a little bit longer. Can you replace the cherry vodka with a different one? I mean, yeah, you could probably do that. I don't think there's anything stopping us from that. It's certainly not going to taste the same, but I guess, let me, let me look. Let me look at the collection we have down here. Do I have anything that's clear that is going to be reminiscent of cherry? It's like, so most of the clear fruity spirits that I had, aside from the peach schnapps, all have a color associated with it. The black raspberry is purple, the cherry is red, the berry is red, the apples and whatnot, they're all like an interesting orange color. So it's gonna do a little bit different. We could do two kinds, we certainly could. It's not a lot of ingredients. We could do a red, you know what? We could do a red Yoshi and we could do a green Yoshi. There we go, it's easy. We'll make it easier on ourselves. Let's do two of them. We're gonna make a green dinosaur, which is credited to the Sin City bartender, and we'll do a red dinosaur. And we'll Mix things up a little bit. That sounds wonderful. Red Yoshi. There are red Yoshi's. Are you inspecting your vodkas? You're inspecting my vodkas? Yes. Are you just gonna come back here and this is Disney Queen? Disney Queen is also fake just because she exists on the internet and this is the Disney Queen. It's all fake. This is all just an act. It's all just smoke, mate, lasers, and mirrors, dude. And she's expecting my vodkas. What if she did? I need to clean off my what shakers. What if she did an apple pie moonshine? Apple pie moonshine is on the table. You could do that instead of cherry. Be careful of my shakers. I need to clean them. Um, my cleaners are. Would you? Would you mind? Actually, okay. would you mind to? What am I taking? If you're offering, it's these dirty numbers. They're disgusting. Dude, oh, wait, don't wait. drink my tea. Here, 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 here. I'm not gonna drink your tea. Is it chamomile? No. What is this? Ginger. Ginger. Ginger tea. Very, very delicious. Very lovely. 
My head hurts, says The Real Expired Milk, so I'm gonna go to sleep, but I'll see if I can watch the rest of the stream tomorrow. Thank you so much for popping in, The Real Expired Milk 1. There are no, if there is an imitator out there, they shall be sacked. And when they come back, they will be sacked again. Thank you so much for tuning in. We will continue with some green dinosaurs. Well, one of them, one of them is green. The other one, maybe not so much. Okay, so we're gonna start with things with, I think we have to, I, I need to remind myself of exactly how we mix this one together. I don't know whether we have to shake it. For some reason, any of the ones that I had from the Sin City Bartender, I didn't write down the instructions because uh, I'm a little dumb dumb sometimes. But I think, I, I assume we have to shake it, but I could be wrong. Put it all together. Excuse me, get some glasses, pour it all. Uh, do we shake? We do a little shake. We do, we do do the shakes. We do indeed. And I get some matching glasses for this one because that seems most appropriate. Most appropriate indeed. I have, let's do these two glasses. They're not very Yoshi-like, um, but they are, but they are glasses nonetheless, and they are matching. So we have two matching cocktail glasses for the rest of our collection. As requested, not really requested, I guess suggested by the Disney Queen, this Apple pie moonshine does not have a lot of color to it, so I think it'll do well for the green Yoshi. We'll continue with that. Oh, no, Yoshi reminds me of apples. Yoshi reminds you of apples. Well, he does eat the apples. That's one. Of, I think that's one of the possible fruits that you can um, you can give to him. I don't so. know why he eats cherries. That doesn't make sense to me. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I the uh, the the original creator opted for this, so that's what we that's what we go for. Alrighty then, let's do that. So I think what I'm gonna do is we're kind of making two cocktails there and I really only have one shaker to work with. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do double the proportions of the shared ingredients between both of them and I will just add the unique ingredients and afterwards and just give it a quick stir just to make sure that things are more or less incorporated. Um, so this is what we're gonna do. To create your green dinosaur and your red dinosaur, we are gonna put into our cocktail shaker. The original recipe calls for an ounce of the, um, the spirit of your choice, which is either gonna be cherry vodka, or in this case, apple pie moonshine, and then you add an ounce of triple sec melon liqueur, and then 0.7 ounce of, three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. Anna is back for her tea, which I had stolen from her so meanly. <laughs> Excuse me. We continue then. We will add into our shaker glass, because we're trying to double things up, two ounces, or about 60 milliliters of triple sec. So allow me to go down and get that triple sec. Usually the triple sec doesn't make its appearance ever, uh, but this time it has appeared twice, so I'm down with that. And we got some, what was it, we got a Yoshi theme here, so I think it's time to change up the music a little bit. Um, let's go for it. What, which one, sh which one is Yoshi like? I think, probably something Super Mario Sunshine-y. I'm gonna go Rico Harbor, that feels good. Good stuff. Anyway, we shall continue. I'm gonna do two ounces of this triple sec into a cocktail shaker. Because we're doubling things up around here, otherwise it would just be one. Boop. Next we're gonna do the same amount of uh, melon liqueur. I have Midori down here somewhere. It's the good stuff, so I don't use it very often, but we use it like twice this time because that's just, green seems to be making a very common appearance on most of these cocktails, and that's, that's, I'm cool with it. That's, that's very, very good because it's very, very tasty. And I'm not running low, so I am more than happy to use a little bit more uh, to continue on with things. Two ounces of your melon liqueur, because we're making two of them. It's got a lovely, lovely green color to it, and it tastes so, so, so good. Next, we're going to add, uh, originally it's three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. We're going to add an ounce and a half, or about 44 milliliters of that lime juice. Um, for that, I'm going to need to go back to the lime collection and do some squeezing. So I have my measuring majigger here. I have the other lime that we had sacrificed before. Um, there's more of it. I'm going to go with it and see whatever, whatever juice is still left in there. So let's go for it. Looks like we have... I'm going to need two hands for this one. Squeeze out the rest of it. There's like barely any lime juice left in there. So we're going to need to... We're going to need to get another one out here. Here's a lime. It doesn't look like a lime. It's gotten a little yellow on us, but it's still definitely a lime. I assure you of that. Give that a cut. Now on the inside, what does it look like? A lime? Yeah, I hope so. Certainly hope so. All right. We need a total of about one and a half ounces, so we're just going to keep on squeezing until we get that. All right. Ah, we're about like an ounce. Maybe an ounce now. Maybe like three quarters of an ounce. I think we're like... We need double. Let's do another one. 
plenty of limes to squeeze. I got plenty of limes. I'm actually really happy about this. Usually I try to, I can be a little wasteful with my fruits sometimes, and I often will have the fruits go bad. We kind of lost an orange uh, earlier on, which was rather unfortunate. Um, but I've gotten a lot of mileage out of these limes, so I'm really, really happy about that, because I really, I, I don't like to waste if I don't have to. And that might actually be the last of our, this is the last lime. The last lime that I have, my goodness. And it's being sacrificed just like the other ones. It's great. It's wonderful. It's delightful and the lovely. Although we haven't had, what is it? Is that, so, was, that was the, um, I think, advertisements for like Godiva. Uh, it's delightful. It, oh, maybe it was Dove Chocolate. It's delicious. It's delightful. It's the lovely. I'd call that one and a half ounces, just about. At least according to my measuring majigger. Your measuring majigger may be different. And if it is, that makes sense. There are many different methods and uh, s systems and whatnot to be measuring your alcohols from. But I have one and a half ounces or about 44 milliliters of freshly squeezed lime juice. I have half of a lime still outstanding, so I'm going to wrap it up, put it in the corner, and maybe we'll get some more mileage out of it. Maybe. Not so sure. We'll have to see. Okay, so now we have everything in our cocktail shaker aside from the unique ingredients that will go into the red dinosaur and the green dinosaur. The green dinosaur from the Sin City Bartender and the red dinosaur is just a, it's a bastardization of the recipe that was so gl uh, gleefully provided to us by the internet um, because we just brought the, we bought the wrong liqueur. But as with most things, the show must go on and you improvise what you have. If you're trying to make a cocktail and you realize, oh my god, like I bought the wrong color creme de menthe. Who cares? It's just going to look a little bit different. Unless, like, somebody, I guess, is paying you and tipping you for the presentation specifically. In which case, uh, I mean, I guess, to the whim of the customer, I suppose. Um, but if you're just kind of doing this kind of as a hobby stuff like I do, you just do whatever you want to. I just felt really bad that I brought the wrong thing. I, like, I went to the liquor store with intent. And the only reason I didn't buy that was because I didn't specifically write on my shopping list, clear cherry vodka. Otherwise, I probably would have been just fine. But I forget. And that's okay. I'm gonna go grab some ice from my refrigerator over here because I need a bit of it. I'm shaking some things up. I go for one large cube and a couple little cubes. That's some... Wow, I just flipped ice in my mouth. That was awesome! God, I love assaulting myself on stream. So cool. Live entertainment, you never know what's gonna happen. One big cube, two little cubes. Pour in your liquid and then give that a shake. So let's go for it. pour this out evenly into both of our glasses here and then we're going to add the corresponding one ounce of ingredients left to each of them one for my red dinosaur one for my green dinosaur i'm gonna need to strain that out luckily i got uh, a very very fancy apparatus known as a strainer here so that is gonna work great Let's see how that looks that is a very very nice green color i'm gonna try to do as even as possible on both sides Yeah, it's looking pretty good to me. That is a lovely, vibrant green color. I love that. I'm going to take my sacrificial yoga blocks out. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit because I kind of want to see if there is any sort of color change. I'm going to capture that up close and personal. Put those there. Do a little bit of a zoom. Let's get it on. Moving a little bit closer to these guys. Just, just a tad. I need to go all in on that one. Just so that we can get... Just so we can see... These dudes. So on one side, for the green dinosaur, we're going to add an ounce of this Old Smoky Apple Pie Moonshine because when Anna thinks of Yoshi, she thinks of apples. Um, apparently, other folks, the Sin City bartender specifically says that we should add cherry vodka. I have this wave cherry flavored vodka. Um, it's going to kind of mess up the color a little bit, but we're going to go for it anyway. And that's going to go into our red Yoshi. And we add about an ounce or 30 milliliters to each of our containers here. The common ingredients were already mixed in the shaker earlier. Let's go for that. About an ounce of... It doesn't really have a very bombastic red color, so it's probably not going to be that bad. Kind of orange. 
kind of orangish. I'm really, really curious to see what that tastes like. I was very, very interested in this in particular because I just bought this cherry vodka the other day and I have never had a cherry uh, flavored liqueur in my collection until just this very day. So I was very, very curious about it. But now that we have the option of the apple pie moonshine, I'm also very curious about that as well. I don't know what that's going to do. So about an ounce of that, a little smoky. I don't think that's gonna change any colors at all. So I don't think it's gonna be very cool. Well, it's cool because it looks cool, so we're just gonna go with that. There's no color change there, but we still have our, it's kind of our orange Yoshi, red, orange dinosaur, red dinosaur, and green dinosaur on the other side. And I think it looks pretty good. And we're gonna garnish these because Yoshi, all the Yoshis have like a little like red hump thing on their back, like a shell. And so we're gonna garnish this with some cherries. I'm gonna go to my fridge and grab some cherries that I have on standby. I'm not gonna use the ones that I would get in. I'm gonna use some other less, um, Less cool ones. I just want to get them out of my food. The quicker I use this stuff, uh, the quicker I can get rid of the bottle and make space for better stuff. Ow! Just on my toe. All the good stuff happens off camera, I'm telling you. Pop that open. Oh, apparently I hadn't opened that yet. That's unfortunate. I'm going to grab some of my uh, fewer, fewer thumb, fewer thumb cherry. Let's see, I got my green, I got a red skewer, and I got I got a black one. Do I have a green one? Nope. Cool. That's what we're gonna go with. Skewer skewer, they say. Stab. Stab? I'm gonna kind of stab it. Alright, there's one. Excellent. One red shell. Let's make another red shell. Ooh, I got two of them on that way. Uh, unfortunately, Yoshi's have only one shell. To my knowledge, unless they're really, really big. And we've got the other one with the other shell, which I'm trying to balance up there. Very tasty. Very tasty and even more delicious. Uh, at least I guess that remains to be seen. I have not, we haven't tried it yet, so I don't actually know if it's delicious. Anyways, we have our red slash orange dinosaur and our green dinosaur. It's Yoshi themed because, because why not? Obviously. I wasn't planning on making this one because uh, I didn't have it on my list, but I think that was mostly just a mistake on my part. I didn't mean to do that intentionally, but here we are. Now, both of them have uh, both of them have an ounce or about 30 milliliters of triple sec, an ounce or about 30 milliliters of melon liqueur, Midori, I used in my case, and three quarters of an ounce or about 22 milliliters each of lime juice that was freshly squeezed. Garnish them both in the cherry, and on one side, you put cherry vodka, which is according to the original poster's uh, recipe, and on the other side, uh, we have uh, apple pie moonshine because somebody else says it. Uh, Yoshi's remind them of apples. Yoshi's in general remind me of fruits. I think when I look at a Yoshi, I think the first thing I get is like citrus because Yoshi's are usually green. And I think limes from that. Um, that's just the association that I have. In any case, let's see what they taste like. I'm really, really curious to see about how the um, this green one tastes because I am very, very curious. I'm sorry, the red one. I'm taking a sip out of the red one. I don't know what I'm talking about. Ooh, wow. Whew. Tastes like a cherry Jolly Rancher. That's what that tastes like. My red dinosaur here. This is the green dinosaur recipe. It uses the cherry vodka. Tastes like a cherry Jolly Rancher. That cherry vodka is super duper prominent. And it's delicious. My goodness. I like, personally, I don't like very tart things. However, if there's one tart thing that I'm really, really a fan of, it's cherry Jolly Ranchers. It's cherry flavoring. I love the taste of cherry flavoring. I just, the cherry's like a, mm, it's a sweet spot for me. And I really, really like that. It is still very, very tart. It's got a, uh, the tartness is kind of, I guess, I wouldn't say it's really mellowed out by the triple sec. It's probably heightened a bit by the triple sec. And it's kind of, I don't really get much of the melon liqueur in there. I think the cherry vodka that I'm using is too powerful to be able to really appreciate the Midori that also went into that drink to give it not only its color, but also like some other softer, sweeter qualities to it as well. Um, it just, eh, it's good, but the Midori is lost on me. This other one though, this other green dinosaur, this actual green dinosaur, which uses the apple pine moonshine, it doesn't have the cherry in it. So I'm wondering how different that this actually becomes. Mm, okay, that is interesting. That is really, really interesting. So the apple pie moonshine 
is like um, if you imagine like apple like apple pie. Or I say apple pie. Duh, it's apple pie moonshine. But like an apple crumble. Like taking a bite into an apple crumble or like one of those apple pies from McDonald's. It's got that it's got that apple flavoring to it, and it's actually kind of it's taken a turn a bit because there's a there's a, quite a bit of lime juice in there, so it actually kind of tastes more like a like a Granny Smith apple. Although I think the, the like the apple flavor that I get there is I guess more Fuji, I guess kind of tastes like a slightly tart apple, and I want to say Fujis are like that, either Fujis or is Macintosh. I don't know. I get all my apple types mixed up, but there is a tart apple out there that isn't a Granny Smith. That tastes like this, and I don't remember which one that is, but it tastes like an, like take, like biting into an apple. It's very good, and it's so cool too that you you actually be able to get two completely different profiles from two drinks that share the base, uh, the same base to it. Um, both of the Yoshi dinosaurs are great. I think it could totally warrant combining a couple other things together to see what other type of like Yoshi colors that we can make. With the base being triple sec for like your sweet orange, your melon liqueur for your general sweetness, like melon flavor, and then lime juice for a bit of a bite in there. Because um, I guess Yoshis are a bit, a bit pretty, a little rambunctious, you know? That's kind of that's kind of in their nature, it seems. So that was really really good. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a quick break, a, a quick break downstairs, and I'll be back in a little bit. Uh, but I'm gonna come back upstairs, and I've got, I'm gonna do two more cocktails this evening until I call it a night. Again, um, this has been fun so far. These are all super, these are all Tails Cop Mario Super, as I will continue to say. I'm just gonna real quick go downstairs. I'll take some of these, uh, I'll take some of these shakers with me just so I can do a sw uh, quick little clean down there, and then I will be back in just a little bit. So please, in the meantime, enjoy the Super Mario Sunshine music, and we'll be back after these messages, I say. Um, I'm just gonna write BRB on the board, because um, I will be R E. That means be right back. I will be right back. Please excuse me for a moment, and I'll be back in a little bit. Here we go! Woohoo! Camera's coming back. Hey. I told you I'd be right back, and I was not lying. I, I am right back. Um, and I, I cleaned off some things downstairs. We're ready to continue on to the next cocktail. I just need to move these off of my bar thing here so I have some more space to work with, naturally. Um, and then we, will, we shall continue this journey back where we left off. I think the next cocktail that we're going to do... Um, I will announce in just a moment. I have to put these cherries back. I almost forgot because my refrigerator is currently open. And we did not, the way that I rearranged things was not very smart. So I had to, had to get creative. And we often have to do. Let's see. Put back in my fridge and then we'll be back for it. Oh my god! Oh. 
everything's falling all over the place. It's fine. <laughs> we make, we make do. We make do. That we do. That we do do make do. Absolutely. I'm gonna clean off parts of my chalkboard a little bit. We've had a couple of drawings so far. I, I'm cool with that. Uh, I don't need, I'm not being right back anymore. I'm gonna get that in a race. Uh, I still have my life remaining. I haven't completely screwed things up, which is awesome. I, I love to see me not making horrible, horrible mistakes on stream. That is a very positive thing. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take these cocktails. I need, my goodness, I need more space in my bar. What am I gonna do? Goodness gracious. Uh, Luigi, you're gonna need to, Luigi, time for your pegging session. Let's a fucking go! Which he's gonna say as I put two Yoshis beneath him, which let's not talk about the ethics of that. Um, we created two Yoshi drinks. Uh, one is the green dinosaur, which the green dinosaur is actually using the recipe for a different dinosaur, because uh, the green dinosaur, the recipe that we got from originally, is using red wild cherry vodka, which is not according to the manufacturer's recommendations. So the red, the green dinosaur became the red dinosaur, and then the green dinosaur was something else. It just subbed out the cherry vodka for apple pie moonshine, and it tasted pretty good. It was pretty good. I think if I had to pick a favorite between the two, I think the um, the apple pie vodka I think is my personal favorite because I am not that into um, not that into tart things, tart sour things. So I am completely into that. We put things things off to the side. The yoga block goes back behind me. Um, and we will continue. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap up the stream after the next two cocktail recipes that we have. The next one I'm going to do is it's going to be a shot recipe, uh, I think, uh, if I can if I can actually do that. Let me let me take a let me take a look see. I think we have another shot here somewhere. I thought I did. I could be very well wrong about that. I think I was wrong about. Oh oh, here we go. I see. There's a a very uh, there's a collection there's a couple of different shots in here. I just didn't see them to begin with. One is, ah, that one doesn't seem that interesting. I'm gonna go back. It's the Super Mario shot. It uses grenadine, um, blue curacao, I guess, and um, something else. I don't really like that one. Let's go with, I see, I don't have that recipe. I don't have, I don't have Sambuca. Otherwise, I do this one. Uh, I have Midori and curacao, but we did Midori already. It's peach and grenadine, more Sambuca, apple, that's a lot of Sambuca. Wow, okay, incredible. So most of these shots actually use Sambuca. I specifically, when I was going out to the store today to go buy some things, I was like, nah, not many of the recipes call for Sambuca. I'm not gonna get Sambuca. And a bunch of these actually call for Sambuca. So I was completely, completely incorrect for that. That's totally on me. Um, what else do we have here? We have one called Tanuki Tonic, which combines Kahlua, Irish cream, and brandy. I think we'll do that. It's not quite a shot drink, uh, but we're gonna do something a little bit different. Um, this one is called Tanuki Tonic, also from the Drunken Moogle. Uh, where they, where it came from before there, I am not exactly sure, but that's okay. It'll, it'll perhaps pop up eventually. Um, this combines one part Kahlua, just coffee liqueur, one part Bailey's Irish cream, according to the recipe, and one part brandy. We haven't really seen brandy, aside from the pawpaw liqueur from before out here so far. And um, although there's a lot of different, I don't have specifically Irish cream, I do have a collection of other cream liqueurs that I do kind of want to try. So we're going to do that. Um, we chill, it says you have to chill all the ingredients in a tall layered grass glass. You put the Kahlua first, then Bailey's on top, then the brandy, drink, serve, fly away. Um, according to Mel, Mel, I don't know who you are, but thank you. Uh, the drink is sweet, but deceiving, just like a trickster tanuki. Um, change up the music a little bit. I'm trying to think what's the most tanuki-like thing. What haven't we done yet? I like, I like the Serena Beach sound. We're gonna go with that. We're gonna just change it to Serena Beach. It's a nice Super Mario Sunshine stuff. I like that. Um, but the tanuki tonic is a kind of layered, layered tall glass type thing. I, I think, I think I have some... Do I have any thin glasses? I think I have a thin glass over the top. Um, and I kind of want to see what that looks like when you try to layer something in a very, very thin shot glass. So I, I'm gonna try that. No, actually it's back here. Hold up. I got it. It's below my new container over here. I had, I've been getting gifts from friends. It's so lovely to have people in this life who care for you financially. No, not really. Um, but I have this tall little glass here. And um, I think, was this ever broken? No, this one's somehow one of the tall glasses that never broke. And it makes a cool sound too. And whatever. Anyways, we're gonna stack it on top. You have one part, uh, one part coffee liqueur. Uh, I have Kahlua, so I'm gonna use. It's Kahlua mudslide. It's not really. 
It's not going to work the way that I want it to. So I'm going to use Mr. Black on the bottom. I don't know if the layering is going to be preserved or not, uh, but we're going to give that a try. Uh, and then you put cream on top of it, and then you put brandy up on top, which kind of makes sense. You put your sweet liqueur on the bottom, then your creamy liqueur up on top, which tends to float a bit, and then you put something high proof up on top with that, that hard layer of cream in between. And we'll see if that works. In any case, let's get right to it. I'm going to need to get first some Kahlua, some coffee liqueur. We just had some coffee liqueur out here for the smashed Goomba cocktail, uh, which was this one over here, which now that I think about it, I'm going to take another swig of because it is so good. It's like a much better Starbucks frap because um, it's got a little bit of, it's got more bitterness from some Amaro in there. Very, very tasty. Would highly, I highly recommend that. Honestly, I really like the Warp Pipe. Warp Pipe is super duper tasty. Really love the Smash Goomba. Super duper tasty. Um, Princess Beach Sangria. It's okay. It's kind of smooth. The Noki Bay Breeze is too much. It is way too sweet for me. And the Yoshis are, I feel like they leave, they're not super complex. I feel like they leave something to desire uh, for, for the both of them. Um, although the cherry, the green, the red one with the cherry vodka and the Midori, um, that's, a, that, that's good. That's a good combo. For people who like sour stuff, tart, tart things, I would recommend that. Um, but that's not really up my alley, so I'm not a huge fan of it. We're going to take one part of coffee liqueur. You could use Kahlua. I'm using Mr. Black. It's what I have, and I prefer it personally. We're going to very, I'm going to very carefully, I don't, mm, I'm going to get a funnel for this one. I think I'm going to need my funnel. Do I have my funnel over here? I think I do. Because I don't think this is going to go in the glass the way that I want it to. Oh, I don't know if I have a funnel over here. Uh oh, oh, but I did find a piece of a, uh, I was wondering where this piece of sunglasses was. This is a piece of a pair of sunglasses from last week, and I lost it. I'm gonna put that down there where the sunglasses are. Um, I don't know my. I do have a phone. There it is. I printed this one specifically. Uh, I'm gonna have to. I, I would not rec personally. I would not recommend. 3D printing, at least with uh, the end, uh, PLA filament, something that you consider to be food safe. Um, this is kind of a waste of plastic, but I'm gonna, this is the funnel that I have. So I'm gonna pour my stuff through it. It's supposed to be, it's got a little thing on the bottom to supposedly make it better to layer with, but it certainly doesn't work for a glass like this. I'm just using this as a manager to get all of this into the glass, and then I'm probably going to toss it afterwards. It's just the unfortunate truth. I printed it out with the intent to use it for cocktails, but it's not, it's not very, it's not food safe, PLA, I don't think it's food safe. And it also just has a lot of like internal gaps in it, and like the, the liquor's gonna get inside, it's gonna get all funky, it's gonna get all sticky, it's just, it's not what I was intending it to be, um, but I wanted to at least get one good use out of it, so I will use that use here. And there it goes. It's putting it inside. Somebody designed that, and I thank them for it, and I printed it, and I thank myself for it. Because I was the one who printed it and sliced it in my slicer. Um, the next ingredient that we're going to need in there, can I actually fit an ounce of each of these in there? We're certainly going to try. Uh, the next thing that I need is an ounce of the in, the recipe calls for Bailey's Irish cream. I don't have Bailey's Irish cream. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a different cream that I have in my collection. I have various different types of cream, and I'm trying to think of the one that is going to go best with coffee liqueur and brandy. I have uh, I have some horchata liqueur, which is very cinnamony. I have some praline liqueur, which is kind of nutty. I have um oh actually. I have a great idea. I have this ch uh, chocolate mint liqueur that I've been meaning to try with something, and I think this is the perfect opportunity to try it. So I'm gonna get that. It's great. It's actually there were a lot of th there was a couple of different liqueurs that a uh, particular set of friends of mine had purchased for me that to be able to use on stream, and I think I've used all of them this time around. So to those of you who are out there, you know who you are. Thank you. You have my most heartfelt thanks, and it's so awesome that I get to use this stuff. Anyway, let's go for it. It's a uh, mint chocolate. It's mint chocolate cream moonshine, I think? If I'm quoting that correctly, it's kind of stuck in my fridge. It's in between the eggs and the aloe vera drink. Um, I, they're not in there for the, the eggs are in there because whiskey sours and stuff, but the other stuff is in there just because. This is another Old Smoky uh, brand uh, moonshine, and this is specifically Tennessee Mountain Made Mint Chocolate Chip Cream. And I was very, very curious to see how this tastes. I think mint chocolate chip cream is going to go great with coffee, and I think it's also going to go well with the brandy too. So I'm very much looking forward to it. Um, I actually ha I have not cracked this thing open yet. This is the first time I've been do able to do so. So I'm really, really excited. So let's go for it. Crack that open. Take off the little top bottle condom thing, whatever, and pop it open. Come on. Yeah, oh, that was so satisfying. What does it smell like? 
Oh my gosh, it smells like mint chocolate chip ice cream. Oh, I love the smell of that. Oh my goodness, that is so good. I'm gonna pop it into my snifter glass just so I can give it, I'm gonna give it a swirl and give it a taste because I love to do that with it. Whoa, it's green. <laughs> it's green. I was not, I for some reason was not expecting that to be green, but it's mint chocolate. So that, that kind of makes sense. That is gonna look really cool on top of this. It's like a, um, if this is supposed to, if the original recipe was supposed to be Tanuki Mario, let's just say if this is Tanuki Luigi. I'll go with that. It smells like, oh my God, it smells like, um, I had the peanut butter whiskey in here before. Um, I didn't actually clean the whole thing out. So uh, I'm getting a little bit of that on the nose. But other than that, mint chocolate ice cream. Oh my God, it's like sipping mint chocolate ice cream. I imagine that you had mint chocolate ice cream in your freezer and you left it out in your refrigerator to melt. That's what this tastes like. That is so dangerous, but it's so good. Oh my goodness. That is really, really tasty. I would highly recommend that. And let's see if I can manage to properly float about an ounce of that on top of my um, coffee liqueur, my Mr. Black that's in there already. I feel like this is gonna taste amazing together. Wow, I am so looking forward to this. All right. I have my single ounce poured. I'm gonna take the rest of this, okay, or just a little bit of it off, that's fine. Cork this back up, put it back in my fridge, because I'm not gonna need to go back into the fridge for a little while. This is a very unforgiving cork. There we go. Put this back in my fridge. Um, and then I'm gonna somehow try to layer it. I don't know if I'm gonna be very successful at that, but I'm gonna give it my most valiant effort. Um, it's, the, it's the only thing that I can promise. The only thing that I can try as a promise on these streams is that I'm gonna try my best, and um, I'm not trying to detract from anything. That's what I'm gonna, that's, that's what we're doing. So like, Supposedly, this apparatus that was 3D printed and will promptly be trashed after the stream because it's all gunky and weird now is supposed to ideally layer drinks on top of each other by slowing down the speed at which it falls. I have no idea if that's going to work. None of my bar spoons are... Actually, is it thin enough to get into this glass? It may actually be. Oh, actually, we're going to do this better. We'll do this one better. I think what you can do is I can put it right here. Actually, we're going to... I'm not confident in it, but I want to try to like explain what I'm saying here. So I'm going to go a little farther inward. I'm going to zoom in on things just to see if we can kind of watch the layering effect happen with the assistance of the bar spoon. We'll give that a try. Let me go grab one of my you good blocks. You good blocks. Put it up on top. We're going to see if we can, um, we're going to see if we can layer that. I mean, certainly, certainly, certainly give that a try. Um, I'm going to put my bar spoon down within. Very carefully so. I'm gonna be propping, like a, I got a little bit of a rotational force on this. I'm going to try as best as I can to go from the top here and pour within. I should probably also, do, I should do this from the other direction. Cause the idea is that it's going to travel down the bar spoon into the top there. I've never actually tried this before and my bar spoon is stuck in my glass. Okay, <laughs> try not to do that. Um, and we'll see if this works. I have no idea if it will. If I make a mess, then that's just how it is. It's kind of working. It's kind of working. It's not really working. Not, not really working. It is layering though, slowly but surely. I'm trying. Oh my god, this is that's not that's not working at all. Well, I made a bit of a mess. That's fine. Instead, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to try as best as I can to pour all that in there. Oh well, I tried. We try our best here. I'm going to go get I'm going to get some paper towels. Clean this stuff up. Probably should have done that preemptively. Was not expecting that to work. I think it's actually going to work out a little bit better because I don't think that this glass was actually going to fit three full ounces of liqueur in there. So it actually kind of works out to our advantage, I suppose. That is very unfortunate, though. I think that was going to be that could have been really, really cool if it worked out properly. But eh, there's a bit of skill. There's a bit of skill to all this stuff. And even if it doesn't necessarily work out, maybe it'll work out next time. That's the thing. If we're too afraid to try things, then we will most certainly never improve. And um, well, we're trying to, as much as we possibly can. So we'll clean up after our mess. We'll zoom back out. And we'll continue back where we were before. It's not quite layered, um, but it is going to be combined together. It's not going to look that pretty, but that's okay. When things are in their rough draft form, it can't always be pretty. 
So that's just kind of that's just kind of what we're gonna go with. We will continue on by adding the final ingredient to the uh, tanuki tanuki tonic. Not really a tonic. There's no tonic water in here at all. But it's a it's a nice. I respect the alliteration. We're gonna add some brandy to that. Uh, the brandy that I use um, is E and J. It's what's most available to me at the store. Um, it's a very it's a very good brandy. I'd say it's a very very versatile brandy. I think it goes well with a lot of things actually. So I'm gonna go for that. I've pretty much given up on the whole layering aspect of it. So I'm just gonna take my single ounce of brandy and I'm just gonna pour it straight in and um that's just how it's gonna be uh, i guess i'll use my little funnel apparatus to go back and do this again there we go that way at least it works it's slowly but surely funneling in there it's a very very slow process but it works tanuki tonic it looks like the tanuki shit itself uh or the power up went if you imagine that perhaps instead of when mario gets the tanuki shroom or whatever like actually like the tanuki outfit going around him if you imagine that the concept of mario and the concept of tanuki combined together in this like like eldritch abomination type form um if y'all have watched full metal alchemist like the the dog the dog girl that's kind of what i'm going for um then you'd understand then you you kind of understand what i what i what i'm referring to there um that's kind of what it feels like. This kind of feels like an Eldritch Horror version of Tanuki Mario or Tanuki Luigi because they used mint chocolate chip cream liqueur, so it's got a little bit of a green tinge to it. This is ugly, but that's my fault, I think. It's supposed to be layered on top of each other, but honestly, okay, so for most of the stuff that I've gotten from the Drunken Moogle, it doesn't necessarily pan out to be what it actually looks like in the pictures that they provide, so maybe there's a little bit of creative liberties happening here, possibly on me, possibly on them. I don't care. We'll just see how it tastes. I'm gonna move on with it. I don't think that this is, it, it says drink served and fly away. I don't know if you're supposed to drink this as layered because it's in a very, very tall glass. So it's not very well combined together. So I think what I'm inclined to do is that I'm inclined to take my little bar spoon and incorporate things together. Cause I feel like it tastes, it would taste better if you combine everything together. And I really can't do that very well because um, this glass is very, very small, very, very thin. Um, so it's not actually working well for me. Let me try. Let me get one of these straws. Straw, straw, straw. I'm just gonna kind of mix this thing up up a bit, a little bit. It's kind of it's kind of separating a little bit. It's got a weird curdling effect going on. Um, we'll see. Hey, if we can if we can mix this well, then maybe it'll be good. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe I just keep the straw in it. I don't know. We try. Cheers, Tanuki tonic. It uh, it looks weird. Feels weird. But is it weird? No, it's not that weird. It's pretty good, actually. Not that bad. It tastes like coffee. Coffee liqueur is very, very prominent there. The mint part of the mint chocolate chip is kind of lost on me. It's like very, very lightly there. It's like it's got a little tinge of mint to it, which I like. It's very, very good. The brandy just kind of spikes up the alcohol content doesn't really add too too much to it i like kind of like the fact that it's a little higher in proof um personally that's kind of towards my particular uh flavor preferences so it is good but the presentation is lacking but i think that's probably on me um it certainly doesn't remind me of a power this kind of feels like a power down to be honest um but not in, a, not in a bad way power down as in like you're powering down for the evening power up as in like it gets you going. No, no, this is this is an ending your night kind of thing because it's kind of it's kind of coffee. It's kind of deep. It's kind of kind of desserty. It's a very desserty drink. So in that way, sweet but deceiving. Tr Trickster Tanuki is what the description says on this. I agree with that. It's a little deceiving. This is definitely feels like a nice nightcap. This might be what I used to, you know, kind of end off the evening. But I do have one more cocktail left, and I do want to move on to that next um, because it is I'm getting rather late over here. I usually don't go this long, but uh, I am I'm having a lot of fun with this, so I'm going to continue with it. I'm going to put this Tanuki cocktail... I'll put it next to the warp pipe because I had some extra space over there. I'm back. I need some space. Mm, maybe I'll put it behind these guys. Nope, I'll do it right here. Right there. I think that'll be useful. I'll put this yoga block away what i use for presentation purposes i got a whole i gotta i gotta clean this bar up it is getting very very messy but like that's just what happens when you run a bar for we've been going for almost three hours now and it's been a, been a lot of fun so far i i really enjoy being able to do this stuff mixology must continue um so 
the last the last cocktail that I'm going to do this evening is one of my own creation. I was kind of I actually haven't really quite figured out what the whole recipe is supposed to be yet, but I was kind of inspired by something that I found out there online. What I had saw, what I had seen was I saw somebody create a garnish that was very reminiscent of a piranha plant. They took a strawberry, some white chocolate chips, and they put it on a straw, and it kind of looked like one of those little red chompers coming out of a warp pipe. And I thought to myself, I was like, wait a minute, what? A piranha, piranha plant. What about a caipirinha? A caipirinha is a cocktail that instead of using rum, uses something called cachaça, which is also made from sugarcane and stuff, but instead of taking on the more molassesy, caramel, funky notes of a, that a rum might do, instead, it takes on the, cold, the more sweeter aspects of it. It's a lot more fruity sugar, more so than, I guess, like burnt sugarcane. And I really, really wanted to try that. So when I went to the liquor store today, I bought because Philadelphia is stupid, Pennsylvania is stupid with their liquor stuff. The only cachaça that I could find in the store, which happened to be this Leblon, this Leblon cachaça, which I found, and I haven't opened it yet, but I'm really, really curious to see what it tastes like because I've always wanted to try a cachaça cocktail, but I'd never had a chance to. And I think I saw uh, I th saw somebody yesterday, uh, last week talk about a caipirinha. I think it was a part of a uh, cocktail bracket. Actually, in particular, um, one of the uh, fellow Twitch tender of ours, who I think started the whole thing, Colorado 12 would be uh, the the person who I took inspiration from. Um, but they, he made a caipirinha as a part of his dad. His um, I think it was a cocktail bracket. Um, and so I was like, okay, well, caipirinha. Kaiparana, Kaiparana plant. Is there a way to combine the two together? And so what I plan on doing is I'm just gonna kind of feel that out and see what, see what works. I don't have a reference for it. I just have a reference of what goes into a Kaiparina. And according to the recipe, I think it was like liquor.com, a Kaiparina uses a lime that's been cut into wedges, a couple of teaspoons of sugar steddled on the limes, and you add two ounces of cachaca to that. And I was trying to think like, what is more piranha planty. What could you add to that? So I think piranha plants pop up out of warp pipes. So I think it'd be really, really cool to make a cocktail that kind of looks like a piranha plant popping out of this caipirinha type based warp pipe cocktail, not like this one, although maybe like that one. To be honest, so the common points between this warp pipe is it uses the lime wedges and it used something else. I think it might have added some sugar in there, but it was really, really tasty. And so I wonder if I can combine the caipirinha and the warp pipe to be able to create a completely different cocktail that's more based off of the piranha plant. So I'm gonna refresh myself on what went into the warp pipe because that was the first cocktail that we, that we made this evening and I've kind of forgotten. So what they did is they combined, uh, the people at the Drunken Moogle combined blue curacao, melon liqueur, hard limeade together for the color of the warp pipe and then added some lime, uh, hard limeade. I just noticed this is limeade, not lemonade, to it. Excuse me. And you muddle up those lime wedges. So I think in order to preserve the color that is the green warp pipe, I could go in a couple of different directions. I think we can either go the blue plus green route, where you kind of get this really, really awesome, this really vibrant green color that looks like a warp pipe, where you combine the blue curacao together with um, with Midori, the melon liqueur. Or I have another, I have another green spirit in my collection, which use which is a sour apple liqueur. And I'm trying to wonder, like I don't know what this cachaca tastes like. So what I plan on doing is I'm gonna taste the cachaca, kind of see what kind of notes that I'm getting from them and either go one route or the other and kind of feel my way around it. And I hope you'll journey, join me on this journey because this is kind of like one of the things that I think, speaking completely openly here, I sometimes feel a little uncomfortable going into areas that I'm not necessarily knowledgeable about. I'm not super confident on creating cocktails myself. I think I'm kind of only just recently getting my feet wet on that kind of stuff. Um, and I feel like there's almost, there almost has to be a point to what you do on these cocktail shows. There must be a plan. There must be cocktails ahead of, prepared, prepared ahead of time. But sometimes it's kind of really, really cool. I was watching a another uh, bartender on uh, Twitch. I think it was the uh, uh, Ender Potion is what she goes by. And it was somebody had made a comment about how it's really, really cool to kind of watch the creative process because she does a lot of, she makes her own cocktails uh, kind of right there based off of like Minecraft and all the video games and stuff. And that was kind of inspiring too. So I'd never done something like that. So... We're gonna kind of feel our way around it. So if things seem a little, 
a little awkward, a little flimsy, kind of flopping our way around. That's just kind of going to be the nature of it. And I thank you all for your patience as well. So let's get right into it. I don't know what direction this cocktail should go, so what, but I think the first thing that we should do is we should try out cachaça because I have never, never, never had cachaça before. I had only heard about it in passing. And to be honest, until I thought of the caipirinha today, I forgot that cachaça existed. I thought, I forgot that the caipirinha used cachaça. I thought it was something that was more tequila based, but it's not. It's something more rum based. Cachaça, at least from what I, it's from one of the research I've done, is similar to rum. It uses uh, sugar cane at its base, but it takes on more of the fruity qualities as opposed to the more sugar cane -y burnt molasses caramel qualities. Um, and it's supposedly, according to what I've seen online, people say that it's actually very similar to tequila in the way that it smells and the way that it tastes, the way that it presents, as opposed to being more similar to rum, which kind of has a, a realm of its own. So I'm gonna take out, I, I use the snifter glass of mine a little much, so I'm gonna take out a different snifter, because um, I'm really, really curious to see how this tastes on its own uh, as a standalone thing. Um, so let's try that. This is LeBlanc Brazil Cachaça. Um, and it says on the back, introducing Leblon natural cane in cachaça from Brazil, fresh pressed cane juice, micro distilled in alambic copper pot stills at the Maison Leblon in Patos de Minas, Minas Geras, I don't know how to pronounce that, G-E-R-A-I-S, I don't know how to pronounce that, rested in vintage oak barrels from France, a lively fruity nose with complex layers of flavor and an ultra smooth finish. Drink neat with fruit juice in a caipirinha or add a Brazilian twist to any classic cocktail. It says to make the Leblanc caipirinha, you muddle four lime wedges and two teaspoons of super fine sugar in a rocks glass. Fill glass with ice and add half, one and a half ounces or about 44 milliliters of Leblanc cachaça, shake and st or stir well, and garnish with a lime wedge. So I think a central component of all these caipirinha, um, um, the, all these caipirinha cocktails that I've seen is that you muddle your, uh, you muddle your lime wedges. So I don't think I'm going to shake this. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to muddle the lime wedges in the glass to add a add the lime oils, add the lime juices, and see what happens there. Uh, but I really, really want to see uh, what this thing tastes like. And I just noticed that my sinfer glass is actually dirty in the middle. There's a weird crust at the bottom of it, which is kind of disgusting. So I'm not actually going to use that. That is nasty. I'm going to take a different glass of mine because there are plenty others over here to use. Um, I'm going to take one of my cordial glasses. I think that'll be a close... Gonna be a close substitute. Um, I started trusting a dishwasher at this at this uh, apartment of at this new apartment of ours. We actually have a dishwasher that we ch that we actually use, and so um, I think I put a little too much trust into it because um, it winds up making a mess of things. I also noticed too because um, I'm also playing the DJ here uh, that the music hasn't changed in a while. So I'm gonna change up the music a little bit for something. Something else completely, something completely different. Uh, not necessarily completely different. What haven't we played so far? Um, I'm trying to think. Personally, what seems cachaça? Something tropical, perhaps. Feels like sun, Super Mario Sunshine. I'm thinking. I'll do either Gelato Beach, Delfino Airstrip, or Bianco Hills. I'm gonna go with Bianco Hills. I like Bianco Hills. That's a good song. We'll go with that one. Let's try some cachaca. Right, right away. As I was pouring it into the gra into the glass, it smells so. It smells like ripe banana, like, like, it smells like, not funky banana, but like, it smells like a ripe, super duper ripe banana from a distance. And I mean like, so it's, it's super good, good smell. Like, I love the smell of a nice ripe uh, banana. It's very, very good so far, and I, I love this. Um, so let's continue with it. I'm really, really curious about that. It smells like ripe banana right off the bat. What does it taste like? Wow. Ooh, wow. That is something different. That is completely different than what I was expecting it to be. Wow. Um, banana and citrus, fruit, apple, pear. It's like pear, it's like pear met banana, ripe, ripe banana met a little bit of lime. Wow, that is really, really good. That's incredible. 
I've never had anything like that before. That is really, really tasty. I really, really like cachaca. That is, um, I remember when I was doing my research, uh, I was like, is is cachaca similar to rum? What is it similar to? And they say like it's kind of a cross between tequila and rum, but it kind of is in a whole, it's kind of in a whole land of its own. I haven't had anything like that. That is a very, very nice flavor. That's what I imagine rum could taste like if it didn't have the chocolatey, sugary notes. If you took all that stuff out and you kept only the funk, that's what I would, if I had to describe that there. Carla gave me a shout out. Oh my goodness. Hey, Carla. Hey, everybody. <laughs> I say that there. I should actually, I should give a shout out back. I don't know how to, what the, what the command is for that. Um, but let's see, how do I, how do I shout out people? Because I was, I was just talking about, uh, I was just talking about that before. I was just talking about Carla now. Shout out. Let me, let me, let me give that right back. Oh my goodness. Oh, thank you. Welcome to the party there. My goodness. I need to see what that name is. Carla no. Well, I need to write that in there. I never done that before. I don't know. I'm gonna give a shout out right back. Oh, please. Anybody who's watching over here, Flowersome K, you dropped the follow. Thank you so much. I would give a shout out right back to Kalina because we're both streaming at the same time. This has been, this is very lovely. This is the first time I've given a shout out. It's a whole new experience for me. It's very, very wonderful. But it has been great. Um, seriously though, I for one have, I'm very, very new to this Twitch tending community there. And I think, I don't know if Colin has started it at all, but I've certainly felt a lot more welcome to the community since me uh, popping into one of Colin's stream. So I would highly, highly recommend going and popping him as a follow as well. Because I have been very inspired and I like to pop on every once in a while. I'm much, a bit of a lurker. Got my, got my anxiety to work with, but it's very, very inspiring. Anyway, um, we shall continue with more cachaca experimentation. It is very, very banana-y. It's super duper tasty, and I am completely, I'm completely taken aback that I've never had cachaca before. It is very, very tasty. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna combine the caipirinha with uh, something a little bit more, something I think apple-y. It gives me a lot of pear vibes. So I actually think it'd be really cool if I take out the brandy that I had before that was the pop liqueur which reminds me a lot of pear brandy. Um, so I'm gonna take that out. I think this would go really, really well with brandy as a kind of split base, uh, split base here. So what, what, what you want, excuse me, wow, I gotta, whew, take a little moment there. Sometimes what you do when you create a cocktail is you kind of split the base a little bit. And what, I mean, what we mean by that is that we take, for example, if your base is rum, but you want something a little more, let's say, agave-like, you'd split the base with tequila. Something like a Long Island iced tea is notorious for stuff like that. You just combine a bunch of different spirits together, and I guess you could consider that a split base, If uh, I, I, I guess, I suppose. But I think it'd be really cool if we combine pear brandy. I think when I put the recipe down, I say pear brandy, but I have this, um, I have this pear pawpaw liqueur here, which I think would be really, really good here. And I think an even split between the cachaca and the pear liqueur, I think it's gonna be really, really cool there. And you can sub that out with brandy. You can sub that out with, let's say, like an apple brandy, like a Laird's Applejack, and I think it would also go really, really well here. Um, but we're gonna try that. So, um, my jigger is a little disgusting. So let me clean that out real quick. Pour that out, give it a little cleanup, and we will continue from there. Let's try that out. There we go. Give that a nice cleaning, and we shall continue um, with something a little bit better. So, in this modified caipirinha, which is going to be Mario themed, that we're going to call the um, the caipira caipirana caipirana plant, inspired by the caipirinha and the piranha plant. I do want to have that green color to it, and I think the best thing that I can do to give it that green color is to give it a touch of blue curacao syrup and a touch of Midori. Honestly, and the only reason I'm doing that there is because I want that nice color there. So I'm not really gonna put too much in there. I think maybe like a, I think maybe a quarter of ounce of each of them is gonna be just fine. Just so that we get like a little wolf pipe thing. And then we're gonna do a cool garnish at the end, which I just learned how to do today. And hopefully I don't completely screw it up. So bear with me and let's continue. Usually uh, a caipirinha uses, I think a total of about two and some change ounces. So I think what we should do is we're gonna add a half an ounce of cachaca, a half an ounce of pear liqueur, papa liqueur, something that's a little, well, let's say pear or apple brandy. And then we're gonna do a quarter of an ounce of blue curacao, a quarter of an ounce of Midori, just to get the color there. And then, and we also have lime, which gets put into the glass as well. And I'm not gonna use this little cordial glass. Um, it's great for the cachaca though, which I'm gonna finish off. That's strong. I, I, I was taken aback by how strong it is. It does have a little bit of um, it does kind of remind me of uh, tequila a little bit. So I'll be honest about that. Um, but I'm gonna grab a different glass. Let's do one of these old or fashioned glasses. 
I think that'll work well here. This guy. We'll put that there, and we shall continue. Um, I'm gonna build it. I don't think we need to do anything special here. I don't think we need to shake it at all. I think if we just kind of let this exist on its own, I think it's gonna be just fine. I'm gonna grab one large cube. I'm gonna place it into our cocktail glass, and we shall continue from there. Actually, this might be my last um, big cocktail cube. So this is actually pretty cool. I don't think, uh, this is the, this has been, I think, one of the longest cocktail, maybe the longest cocktail stream I've ever done. This has been really, really fun. I've been having a blast so far, and, and if you have, then that's great. If not, your feedback is always welcome. Let's go for it. We're gonna need a single ounce of cachaca, or about 30 milliliters. I've got Leblanc, it's very ripe and banana-y. It's got a funk to it that is so, so, so ever-present. There we go. Put that there. An ounce of that, and I'm gonna put that cachaca away. Very, very tasty. I would highly recommend that. I'm gonna put that behind my rums because it's it's similar. I love that so much. We're gonna split the base by adding a full ounce of this. It's Paul Paul liqueur, but it's got apple brandy, maybe a little pear notes to it. I think the pear would go really, really well with the cachaca. So that's kind of where this inspiration is coming from. Plus. It's a nice excuse to use yet another in unique ingredient from the collection. And again, like if you probably don't have pawpaw liqueur in your collection, but you could use apple brandy for this. You could use pear brandy for this. I think it would be more easily accessible that way. Uh, and if cachaca is hard to come by in your store, um, I guess you could use like a really, really funky rum. I guess would be my my other recommendation there. If you don't have cachaca where you are, I would hope that you do. Um, I, there was only one cachaca in my store, so that's just the kind of the one that I had to go with. Um, so we have equal parts of those in our glass. We're gonna add a quarter of an ounce of blue curacao. I'm gonna use some syrup, uh, cause I don't really want any of the, I, I just want it for color. That's really all I want it for. I don't need this um, sour apple liqueur here. I'm actually not gonna use it. Quarter of an ounce or about seven mils of your blue curacao using some syrup here. I really only want it for color. I just want things to look cool as well. I want it to look like it could be a very shallow warp pipe. Like, like a piranha plant would be coming out of. And then we're gonna do a quarter of an ounce of Midori as well. It's gonna bring that, that green color to it. We're gonna try that and see. See if that evens out the color a little bit. I'm under the impression that it might. There we go. Put it on top. It's gonna have a nice green color to it. Um, and I completely for whoa. Got my cap on the floor. I had completely forgotten to add uh, the limes in it. I, what, I completely warped past that, uh, no pun intended. So I'm actually gonna go, I'm gonna actually go, I'm gonna go back because um, I wanna make sure that we have our lime wedges in there. I do have a spare lime half over here. So I'm just gonna real quickly cut that up into a couple of wedges. I'm gonna make sure that we're able to muddle that in our glass. Very, very lovely. Um, I'm gonna grab another glass for it. I want to make sure that we do, I want to make sure that we do this right. So let's grab a spare glass. Probably should have done this first. Take lime wedges, put them in there. Take a muddler, muddle those up as best as you can. Really release all of the lime juices and stuff. The point is to be able to not only extract the lime juice, but also to extract the lime oils from the peel because we're interested in all of it, every single lovely, lovely bit of it. All right. And that you've muddled up your limes, made them look like a, a murder scene. We're gonna um, transfer from my one glass to the other one. Um, ice cube and all, making this very slight mess. Honestly, no harm, no foul. Now most of the blue color got left behind, but the warp pipe is still there, which is great. It's not blocked, we can still fit in it. Um, and so this is the bottom warp pipe part of our piranha plant. The other part is a gar is a garnish, which I found um, online. I don't remember where I saw it. I think it was just somebody had um, created it on Pinterest. But essentially the idea is you take a strawberry, you cut a little triangle out of it, and you add some little white dots on it to make it look like a piranha plant, and you stick that on like a like green stick or something. I've got some green bendy straws, so that's just what I'm going to use. But so what I have on the side here is I have some strawberries. I'm gonna put that there. And um, I'm gonna try to see if we can get a proper angle for these. Um, I still don't have a good angle for like creating garnishes and stuff like that, so my sincerest of apologies, but I'm gonna kind of prop up my cutting board onto these mixing, onto these um, yoga blocks of mine to see if we can get a good view of attempting to create this garnish um, up close. Um, 
And that's just the best thing that I can that's the best thing I can do for y'all. So that's what we're gonna go that's what we're gonna go for. Move things slightly to the side so that we're nice and even out. And let's give it a try. Alright. So what we're gonna do to try to create a piranha plant is we're gonna take a strawberry. Let's do this is a nice fat guy here. And the idea is we are going to cut a slit right down the center to kind of look like a triangle and then we're also going to take something like something green something long like a straw which i think mine is too big for my glass over here so i'll probably trim it a little bit with some scissors that i have to go grab but that is generally the idea and then we also have in the background we have some white chocolate little morsels here that the plan is to kind of stick into the strawberries so that it kind of looks like a piranha plant so let's let's give that a try so the first thing that i'm going to do is I'm going to cut out a triangle from my strawberry here. Try not to cut towards yourself. If you have to do that way, make sure you're very, very careful with it. Kind of cut down a nice steeper, steeper angle. See if I got that. Did I get that? I hope so. And a little bit more. There we go. Nice. Very, very tasty. Feel free to eat the other part of the, um, the strawberry that you missed. I'd say that's kind of piranha planty. I dig that. And that's thing we'll do. We'll go for our white chocolate morsels here. And we're just going to kind of, we're going to stab them into the side. We're going to try as much as we can to make as many white dots as possible. The, uh, the strawberry outside is actually quite malleable. So to stab, you can kind of stab as many in here as you want to. They'll kind of stick around. Um, I thought perhaps that it might be better to get like, um, let's say, um, whatever like um, cake bakers use to really make sure that whatever decorations that they put on their pastry stays on there, like a, like a fondant or something like that. But if you push in hard enough, then they should stick around there pretty well. That's kind of the idea we're going up there. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more just so we get a nice view of our little piranha plant here. I got one side. I'm gonna go for the other one. Um, maybe it's not super game accurate, but we're trying our best here. I think it's looking pretty good. You give them a little, these, it's nice that these little morsels have like a little spike on them. So it's actually very easy to kind of push that on in and kind of sticks right there. And uh, that's kind of the idea. We're just gonna keep on doing that until we are satisfied with how many dots are in our piranha plant. There we go. Do one more to the side there and we have Effectively a little piranha plant. I think there's a, something a little lacking on the uh, I guess the the other side the perpendicular lateral side So I'm gonna add one on the front. I'll turn it around kind of into the in the mouth almost and then, uh, Right there. Oh, I lost one of my morsels. That's okay. I'll just I'll just eat one It's delicious I'm gonna put that down just for a moment while I leave my I took put my white chocolate morsels away go zoom out just a tad and then the idea is we add the piranha plant to it so let me get find my my straw and my missing morsel and we're just gonna kind of stab it through the other side to make it look like a piranha plant hopefully i don't completely ruin the work that we had done with the with the white chocolate things and it worked pretty well i kind of lost one of them but that's okay i can try to I can try to put it back in I think it was missing on this side. It's facing towards me. Not very to be a very good host there. I'm so sorry. There we go. This is our little piranha plant that we have made. Looking pretty tasty. Now, what we'll do is we will place that into our cocktail glass. Now, I don't have, this is a rather long piranha plant, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna very quickly grab one of my pairs of scissors, which my lovely assistant is going to use. <laughs> lovely, it just popped out of nowhere, it's great. <laughs> Uh, Anna's up here helping me and I'm gonna very I'm gonna try to angle this so that it looks like It's just high enough out of here. I Think that'll work And we'll put our piranha plant who is trying to gnaw its way out of our little warp pipe and I present to you all a Cameron original 
It's called the Kaiparana Plants, and it is, it is a riff on a Kaiparina, and also inspired by the Super Mario series. I think it looks very, very, it's so cute. I love the way this looks. The, I cannot take credit for the garnish. Um, that was created by somebody else completely. It is, it is not it is not my garnish, um, but I took heavy inspiration from, I think somebody had posted somewhere on uh, Pinterest, and it looked really, really good, and I was like, I gotta try that. Um, so I went to the store, bought some more, got some more white chocolate chips, got some strawberries, and I think it looks very, very tasty. I'm a big fan of that. In any case, this was, this is what we are calling, that I'm calling, the Kaiparana plant, a riff on a Kaiparina. It uses one ounce uh, or 30 milliliters of cachaca, split base, one ounce or 30 milliliters of pear liqueur, you could use apple brandy, you could use pear brandy, it's whatever is most accessible to you, and you add a quarter of an ounce each of blue curacao um, syrup or otherwise, something blue, and then um, Midori, melon liqueur, to give it that kind of warp pipe co color. Try not to get your nose nipped a bit by that piranha plant that's kind of lurking in there. This is, this is really, really lovely. This is an, I feel like this is, I'm not trying to toot my own horn here. I really, really like the taste of cachaca, which is something I just, I just tried today. I have never tried cachaca before, but I really, really like the kind of ripe banana flavors that I'm getting from this. It balances supremely well with the brandy from the pawpaw liqueur that I'm using, which is very pear-like, and it's, it's, it's very nicely balanced. It's a little more spirit forward, um, so it's a little, it's a little different. It might not be necessarily like accessible from a flavor standpoint for everybody, but, um, it's themed. It's green, it's beautiful. I think we added just enough of the blue curacao and the Midori to just get just the just the color there. And honestly, you could probably use even less. You, you could definitely like, you don't need to add a full quarter of an ounce of the Midori or the blue curacao. You could probably even use like eighth of an ounce or maybe something, probably even less, uh, less than, something less than a quarter of an ounce. I don't think you necessarily need it there, but just something to give that like kind of warp pipe feel to it. It's very, very tasty. It's really up my alley. And I think there's just enough sweetness there added by, I think it's the blue curacao syrup that I'm tasting the most, but there's also a bit of sweetness from the Midori in there, but it's speared forward, it's balanced, it's got notes of banana, it's got notes of pear, it's got notes of um, just general sweetness, I guess melon, because Midori and whatnot, and it is delightful. Delightfully tasty, and it looks cool, I think. I think it's a very, very cool cocktail. So, just, this is all that I have for the evening. This is all the Super Mario cocktails that I have planned. Um, I, there's, there's many, many more. There are others in my collection. I would love to do something like this again. Um, but I'm out of time for this evening. I gotta go to sleep. It's almost midnight over here. I just had a really, really fun time here. I usually do not go this long with these cocktail streams, but I've been very, very obsessed with Super Mario recently. Um, I've been having a lot of fun listening to the music and just kind of reminiscing of my own nostalgia and stuff. And I feel like it would just do it justice if we did a whole swath of cocktails just completely celebrating Super Mario. I don't know. I like it. Maybe that sounds a little corny and stuff, and maybe I sound like a total nerd, but I am totally, totally, totally into it. So, in any case, just a quick wrap-up of everything. We covered various different cocktails, and I will try to post all of these onto the Discord server. I don't think everything, single one of these is going to make it onto the Instagram or anything, but I will try to make sure that if, you, if you're very interested in this kind of cocktail stuff, pop into our discord we have i put all the cocktail recipes there and all the photos if i take photos of all of them and i try to put them all out there it's uh if that's the kind of stuff that you're into um we covered the warp pipe uh we covered the one up shot which is no longer here because i take a shot of, i took a shot of it and got myself an extra life haha <laughs> funny we made a noki bay breeze princess peach sangria we then made an isle delfino which looks very very polluted a smashed or crushed goomba and we had a green dinosaur and a red dinosaur green yoshi red yoshi we also made a tanuki tonic which was a little change it's a green tanuki tonic with some mint chocolate in it as opposed to uh, regular bailey's irish cream so let's call it luigi's um tonic um, and then we made what I'm calling the Kai Piranha Plant, which is kind of a Kai Parina with a bit of green to it and an extra special garnish with something a little bit on the side. This has been awesome. I, I love stuff like this. And I'm so happy this is the first time that I've done a cocktail stream where there was music other than lo-fi. Because uh, we got to listen to some really, really fun, in my opinion, uh, super fun, Super Mario 64 and Super Mario Sunshine. Go play those games for yourself if you're a fan of platforms and stuff. 
that's that's all I have planned for this evening. This has been wonderful. So I take you all to the end screen where I will bid you all a very, very heartfelt uh, adieu. This has been really, really fun. And I love doing this kind of stuff. So thank you all so much for popping by to the bar with an X where we made some Super Mario cocktails. I'll do it again sometime at some point. This is very, very fun. So if you're sipping on a Kai Piranha plant or something else, something swimming in your glass, your warp pipe or whatever you're, uh, you're sipping on, try not to get bit. Grab yourself a power up. Make sure that you, you can take your cap off now because the night is over. We are done for now. But the party continues on next time. Have a wonderful evening, everyone, if the moon is out where you are. Have a wonderful s morning if the sunshine is out where you are. The party continues another time. But until then, y'all, cheers. Yahoo! And peace out.